ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Dr. Pepper. On a rainy night in Music City, it is a rare clash between the Pac-12 and the SEC. It's the one and one Stanford Cardinal and the Commodores of Vanderbilt, also one and one. Last week, the Cardinal coming off an embarrassing loss to Kansas State, rolled into the Coliseum, and Nathaniel Pete put number 14 USC on notice with an 87-yard first quarter touchdown run. But this was Tanner McKee's coming out party. He really looked sharp in his first college start. The defense got a pick six from Caillou Blue Kelly, the final straw for Clay Helton at USC, 42-28 the final. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt at Colorado State, Joseph Bullivis, the Alabama transfer, hits the game winner, Clark Lee's first win. Vandy's 11-game losing streak comes to an end. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Music City. Alongside my partner, Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Matvick. Tiffany Blackman will join us in just a bit. First ever meeting in football between these two great academic institutions. I just hope you and I are smart enough to call this one. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> well, you don't have to be a genius to know that Tanner McKee has the making of, of something special at Stanford. He really does. And in the first game as the lone starter at quarterback for Stanford last week, I thought he was exceptional. He absolutely dissected that Trojan defense. He's six foot six. He's got those long limbs. But the ball placement and the precision accuracy is what really jumps off the field from McKee, the ball jumps out of his hand, and he has the ability to just drop that dime right in there to those wide receivers. Meanwhile, Vandy sophomore quarterback Ken Seals continues to grow. Last week, he took a big step. He did. Let's remember, he's just a true sophomore. He's still getting used to the new language and verbiage of this new coaching staff. But last week, end of that second quarter, really got going. I think the key for Seals is for him to get started earlier. Rained most of the day, now just cloudy and humid. Actually, a pretty decent night for football here in Nashville. Vandy's second meeting against the Pack. They lost at UCLA in 1961. Stanford is 5-1 all-time against the SEC. Last played the SEC in 1978, beat Georgia in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Vanderbilt won the toss, deferred. Stanford will receive. And Joseph Bullivis has it on the tee. Nathaniel Pete, Austin Jones back to return. And we're underway on this Saturday night. And the Cardinal will get it first, starting from the 25 yard line as we bring in our friend Tiffany Blackman. Guys, Stanford coach David Shaw said you don't know how someone's going to handle being put in the fire when things get tough. Well, he's been so impressed with quarterback Tanner McGee's ability to not only handle that pressure, but also bounce back with a smile on his face when things don't go as smooth. Now, McKee, so impressive as you guys were talking about in that game against USC. Well, Shaw said he feels like McKee has all the tools, all the talent, and that the ceiling for him is extremely high. And the phrase Shaw kept using this week, Tiffany, was unshakable. He's never too high, never too low. Does a great job leading this offense. And the Cardinals' first play from scrimmage is a pass, and it's Austin Jones out of the backfield. That's a pickup of nine on first down. David Shaw is also the play caller in his 11th year as head coach. Last week's win over the Trojans, his 28th top 25 upset. How great was it talking to Shaw this week, right? Just a wealth of information. I can't believe it's his 11th season coming here out of Stanford. From the 34 yard line, second down and one. And another pass, E.J. Smith, the son of the Hall of Famer, Emmett Smith. And the Cardinal will move the chains for the first time. This is very much a rhythm offense, right? West Coast based offense. They like to get the ball out, crossing routes, that sort of thing. But make no mistake, it still has the calling card of a David Shaw offense. And that is they like to run the football. You'll see a lot of tight end groups out there, some extra offensive linemen. They really like to set the tone with that run. 
Only 39 yards rushing against K-State. 141 at USC last week. So a little improvement. And here is the first run. It's Austin Jones. He's got a lot of room. A race to the sideline. One man to beat. He could go. And knocked out. Inside the five-yard line, out at the three, as Anthony Orgy made a touchdown-saving tackle. And when Stanford loads up with all those big guys inside that box, it brings the defense down, and then Jones just really has one man to beat. There's one lone safety back there. You see the speed, the cutback ability. And again, run-based offense. You think McKee, oh my God, he's going to carve us up, and boom, 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 here comes the run. 61-yard run for Jones as Isaiah Sanders, the Wildcat quarterback, comes in. And there's motion for Stanford. Before the snap, false start offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Jake Hornibrook. And this is where they like to bring in Isaiah Sanders, the Air Force transfer to run that zone option, but I think they're going to go back to McKee here. Now, week one, they rotated McKee and senior Jack West at quarterback with Sanders sprinkled in. McKee and West did not find a rhythm, but it was McKee last week who certainly found a rhythm. He's back on the field for first down and goal. And he'll keep it. He'll cut it up. Touchdown. <laughs> Stanford makes it look very easy on the opening series. A seven-yard touchdown run for McKee, his second TD run of the year. And this is deceptive because Tanner McKee is not a running quarterback. And so you're watching tape all week. Okay, he's going to give that ball. But look, it's a clear lane out there. No one accounts for the run. And even McKee, not the fleetest of foot guys out there, does a great job running that ball in. And, and I was so impressed. You heard me talking all week, right, to the whole crew, how Impressed I have been with McKee. And Joshua Carty comes on for the extra point to make it seven to nothing. Four plays, 75 yards in under two and a half minutes. He looked like he's having a lot of fun out there. It's just a zone where you see the whole defense collapse down, and then you get the block on the outside by Eurosick, the tight end. That's just precision offense to start this game for Stanford. He said, hey, we don't need a Wildcat quarterback. <laughs> That's right. Get it done. He took offense to that. <laughs> well, Clark Lee was an accomplished defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. When he was leading that side of the football for the Irish, they only lost five games. But he decided to hire a defensive coordinator, Jesse Minner. He does still collaborate yep. with the defensive unit, but He's the CEO. He's got a big rebuilding project. He's a Nashville native, just 38 years old, and he's excited to have his dream job. That's right. You asked him that question yesterday. Were, were you tempted to take over the defense? He said, look, I, there's so much I need to do right now for this program in terms of building culture and getting this thing back together. He's really focused on that. And, and I think, you know, Nashville native, as you talked about, played here at Vanderbilt, you know it means something to him, and he really thinks he can be a part of this long-term rebuilding project for, Stan for uh, Vanderbilt. Now Vanderbilt will get it for the first time. And the big leg of Joshua Carty puts it through the back of the end zone as we go down to Tiff. Well, guys, Vanderbilt coach Clark Lee handed that game ball to quarterback Ken Seals last week because of the way he responded to adversity. Seals led them to that comeback win over Colorado State. It snapped an 11-game losing streak for the program, and about getting that win, well, Seals told me that it's a feeling he won't soon forget. He also feels like this program, he says, is ready to take the next step. Yeah, I mean, what a big confidence boost, right? Young guy, sophomore quarterback, and he wins that that game ball there, but the key for him, let's get him into the flow of this game early. Find the plays he likes most, some of the easy stuff, easy completions. I think that's how he served best. Yeah, the offense last week didn't find rhythm until the second half. They're incomplete on the first play from scrimmage. As Seals misses low to Will Shepard. And that's why I talk about why it's important to get him in the flow, because sometimes he has the tendency, Clay, to get inside his own head and get down on himself a little bit. If, you can get him in the flow like he was at the end of the second quarter of the game last week. They're in business. 
Raymond Davis, the junior out of San Francisco, is to the right of McKee. And they will feed Davis, who finds some daylight up the middle. Davis, 77 yards on 17 carries last week at Colorado State. He's a transfer from Temple. And Joey Lynch, who's calling the plays, called Davis our smartest football player. You know, and he did a great job in the run right there, shooting that gap. Is, does great in the pass protection game as well. First first down for Vanderbilt. As they've got it out to the 37 yard line already down seven to nothing. And a quick scoring drive by the Cardinal. Here's Seals. First down to the right and now he's going to run. Lowers his shoulder stays on his feet. He took a wallop at the 42 yard line. But gets ahead to the 45. First down, Commodores. He just put a lick on DeMooney. I'll tell you, Clay, there's nothing that fires up your team and your sideline more than when your quarterback lowers his shoulder. That was great. And you see that Vanderbilt sideline exploding. Back to Davis. Well, he's got some quick twitch. You know, Vandy got shut down by FCS East Tennessee in week one. He improved last week. What was the biggest difference? I, I think it was they gave him a ton of explosive plays. The ETSU did a better job of that last week. Well, so far, Davis is proving a load to bring down, and that's what Clark Lee told us. He said he's 5'9", 205, built like a chest freezer. <laughs> and he's been fun to watch here early on. That's a pass complete to the outside to Chris Pierce, the big physical playmaker. Number 19 made some big catches last week. Right now, Vanderbilt is in their fastball offense. That's what they call it. They get a positive play. Boom, they're right up to the line, snapping the ball again. They'll go three wide to the top of your screen. Seals looking that way. Penalty flag. Spinning out of a tackle is Devin Body. Gets inside their 30, lost the football. Stanford says they have it. And indeed they do, but there is a marker down. Offside, defense number 31, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. So wipe out the takeaway for Stanford. Saren Manley, the starting corner, was offside. And Stanford has a couple of good cornerbacks. Saren Manley there, there with the penalty. And on the other side, let's bring him in now. Caillou Blue Kelly. He's had a couple interceptions on the year. And just a great man coverage guy, number 17. He's at the bottom of your screen here. He's been electric these first two games. His dad, Brian, played in the NFL. One of the best defensive backs in the Pac-12. Boy, Davis having a field day here on this opening series. Rumbles close to the 20-yard line before he's finally brought down. It's a gain of a dozen. Noah Williams finally made the stop. Davis is running downhill right now. It seems like they got Stanford off pace a little bit with his fast offense. And let's also think they could bring in Mike Wright, the running quarterback here at some point once they get inside the 20. Davis again, another hard run up the middle. Stanford rotates a three-man and a four-man front. Lance Anderson, in his eighth year as defensive coordinator, you can see this this unit a little bit on its heels right now. A little bit, absolutely. Some big guys up front. It's a linebacker-based defense. Seals going to the end zone, and that's overthrown. He was trying to high point it for Chris Pierce, the 6'4 receiver out of Virginia. And you see Stanford getting some pressure on the quarterback. That's the one thing. You know, we talked to the defensive coordinator, Lance Anderson, this week. We, we got to get more of that pressure. Only three sacks on the season so far. You see, they just bring the blitz, some linebackers, got a cornerback blitzing. One way or another, they got to get pressure on the quarterback. Good job. It's one thing that Stanford did defensively last week. They limited USC's big plays. Trying to slow Vanderbilt down now as they've moved inside the red zone. Three touchdowns on six attempts in the red zone so far this year for Vandy. Seals, Cox fires, that's complete. That's another first down for the Dorks. That one was hauled in by Shepard, who's poised for a big breakout year. Vanderbilt and Seals really in sync right now. Inside handoff, Rocco Griffin. 
He'll get it to the five-yard line. Caillou Blue Kelly, the aforementioned corner, who's having a great start to his year, made the stop. It's going to be second down a goal. Yeah, he's fantastic. He doesn't stop that right there. That ball's in the end zone. We talked about how great he is as a cover corner, but also a great job coming up and run support. Stanford scored quickly. It's been a more methodical move down the field for Vandy on their opening drive. Shepard goes in motion. Back to the ground. Griffin toward the end zone. And did he get in? No. They're going to mark him just short at about the half-yard line. Quick so, snap. So it'll be third down and goal. Seals trying to sneak it in himself, and there is no chance looking for room between center and guard on the left side. And now it's fourth down and a decision for Clark Lee. Yeah, I don't love that call right there, trying to quick sneak with Ken Seals. Give that ball to Davis. He's been your workhorse on this drive. There was just no room as Davis comes back in for Vandy. Here we go. Fourth down. Going to choose to not take the field goal here. Got Will Shepard at the top of your screen, one on one. 14th play of the drive. Davis, second effort got him in. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. You just got the sense Davis was not going to be denied on this series. You know, he was feeling like this entire drive. And I got to tell you, partner, the most maligned aspect of this Commodore football program is their offensive line. I'll tell you what, right now, though, that was impressive by them. They're pushing some bodies around, really setting the tone and setting it up for Davis to punch it in. So now here comes Bullivis, the reigning SEC player of the week after that game winner last week for the extra point. Bingo. And we're tied at seven. 14 plays, 75 yards in a little over five minutes. Vanderbilt knotting it up. First ever meeting between these great universities on the gridiron, and so far it has been fun in Music City. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. An electrifying start. For this one between the Pac-12 and the SEC. Stanford scores quickly on its first drive. Vanderbilt marches down and answers Raymond Davis. Nearly 1,000 yards rushing at Temple two years ago before opting out last year and transferring to Vanderbilt. It's the first touchdown tonight for the Doors as Nathaniel Pete, an electric return man, gets it across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Because of COVID, Stanford played only one home game last year. Had some impressive wins during the campaign. Back-to-back -back four win seasons. Six games last year, of course. This is the seventh straight road game going back to last year <laughs> for the Stanford Cardinal. They're going to be so excited to be back home next week against UCLA. So David Shaw said, he said, we, we know how to win on the road. We have experience with that. You know, like you said, start off 0-2 last year, then four straight wins all on the road. Here's McKee going to hit his tight end, Benjamin Yarosik, who's got some room up the near sideline for a first down catch and run. Out to the 47. Now, Tucker Fisk, their top tight end, is out with an injury tonight. That affects Stanford on both sides of the ball, Rock. It does, yeah. Fisk is also a great defensive end. Pl applies a lot of pressure, but also is a blocking tight end. He's a 6'4", 285-pound body. They're going to miss here tonight, but a lot of great pass catchers. There's Fisk right there. Look at that guy. A <laughs> Viking warrior. Fifth-year senior out of Davis, California, unavailable tonight. Didn't make the trip. He'll be uh, cheering from the sideline. First down and 10. Here's Austin Jones. And this defense led by defensive coordinator Jesse Minter. We have to get Stanford out of rhythm. 
it's it's going to be a challenge all night. How do they do it? Absolutely. I mean, they, they just got to change up the looks, I think, is what they've got to do. Tanner McKee, even just as a youngster, as a sophomore, does a good job diagnosing what the coverage is. So they got to show one coverage and roll down into another, try to keep McKee off balance from reading that defense. Here's E.J. Smith on the jet sweep. Good patience. Waited for a little daylight and then nudged it up inside the 45 yard line close to another first down. Nate Clifton, the defensive end, brought him down. It'll be third down and short. See, here's the third down here for, for Stanford here. And they substitute in. They'll bring in another offensive lineman, another tight end. They'll go big personnel. Now Vanderbilt counteracts with bringing in a couple more big guys. Stanford really struggled week one on third down. Five for ten last week at USC. Big reason that they won. There you see that jumbo personnel. No wide receivers on the field. Boy, Bandy was ready for it. The handoff to Yurasik and the Commodores cut him down right at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down. I don't love that play call at all. I mean, you got the big boys in there and you choose to go horizontal. Go downhill, get those guys going, and just an exceptional job by Owusu making that tackle, and it's fourth down. That's the thing about Owusu, he's always around the ball, it seems, and he'll come off the field here for this fourth down play. The Cardinal two for two this season on fourth down, and McKee, again, not the Wildcat quarterback, but playing the part here tonight. He's going to get it ahead for the first down. Yeah, and look, he's he's just good enough at it where you have to respect it as a defense. And if you don't, he's going to run it like you saw in the touchdown. But, but this is David Shaw, Stanford football. Big linemen out there, tight ends, run that football. And offensive line showed marked improvement from week one to week two, especially good in pass protection last week. Absolutely. Versus K-State, they gave up four sacks and eight tackles for loss. Much better last week against a USC defense that loved to bring pressure. Play fake to Jones, McKee, all kinds of time. Tipped in the secondary and knocked away by Ethan Barr. The linebacker has just great instincts. He's a throwback. And that was an exceptional play by Barr. It's play action, so he comes up on the run fake, and as soon as he sees it's not, boom, he gets back and then reaches the ball up and knocks that ball out of the air. That's an exceptional play by the linebacker. Barr had a team-high 22 tackles Ooh. in the first two weeks. <laughs> That's having a day. He's a very smart player. You watch him out there. You can tell he's just not out there running around. He understands offense. He understands what the blocking scheme is trying to do to him. Jones behind the fullback, Jay Simmons. It will be Jones picking his way inside the 40, down close to the 41-yard line. We'll kick off your week two NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific with the Countdown crew. We go all access with Jameis Winston, who takes you inside his offseason transformation, plus Randy Moss ranking today's best college football catches in all the early breaking stories, leading us right up to kickoff. It's already been an exciting NFL season, week one. How about that Raiders-Ravens game to oh, kick man. things off? Wow. David Shaw. Of course, uh, worked with John Gruden in the NFL back several years ago. That pass is complete, caught at the 22-yard line. First time Elijah Higgins has been targeted tonight. He brings it in for a gain of 15. And, and what a dart he throws. He gets back there in the pocket, and then once he's set up, he's, the ball just jumps right out of his hand. That's a gift of a quarterback. You know, if you see how that ball just kind of really come flying off the hand, I think McKee has it. McKee, a big recruit out of Centennial High School back in 2018. Native of Corona, California. He'll go under center this time. Here's Nathaniel Petey's dangerous. Big touchdown run last week, and he's got another one here tonight. Touchdown, Cardinal. <laughs> A 21-yard gallop for Nathaniel Pete. And Stanford just gives you, Clay, so many things to think about, so many personnel groups. Now they pack you inside that telephone booth, and Pete just finds a little bit of a crease. They spread you out wide. They bring a couple wide receivers on. Then they bring tight ends, bring it down in tight, keep a defense off balance. 
Joshua Cardi comes back on. For another extra point attempt. Perfect so far this year on extra points. And he stays that way as it's 14 to 7, Stanford. The Stanford offense is run game really showing up here tonight. And Pete run behind those big bodies, the blockers. They have Stanford up here in the Music City. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve, and in part by the uncorked slushes only at Sonic. Fandy and Stanford meeting on the football field for the first time. They played on the baseball diamond at the College World Series back in June. Stanford in walk-off fashion, eliminating the Cardinal from the College World Series on their way to the final, which they lost to Mississippi State. Well, somebody's defense has to stand up. Three possessions total in this game, three touchdowns. As Stanford goes back in front, and now we'll see how Vanderbilt answers after a 14-play scoring drive in their last possession. Step aside, Ken Seals and company back out in a moment. Fourteen to seven, Stanford. You're looking at a couple of good linebackers: Ricky Miazan, Jacob Mangum, Farrar. This is the healthiest that Stanford's been at linebacker in two years. Yeah, these guys came in together as recruits, but they haven't been have been on the field at the same time because of those injuries. I mean, they're best friends, they're roommates, and Miazan is the top tackler this year. But they got to have a hand in stopping this run, which looked really good for Vanderbilt on that first drive. Ken Seals two for four, 13 yards passing. That first Vanderbilt scoring drive was done mostly on the ground. They start with Raymond Davis again carrying the football, and there's a tackle for Mieza. And it's tough playing linebacker here because there are a lot of times a three down front. And this isn't good. Oh, yeah. Raymond Davis. Holding that left knee, you can see he's got a brace on the right knee, but he's indicating that the left knee is giving him problems here. He's been exceptional so far in this game. Ooh. Oh, wow, yeah. A big Stanford body come down on the back of his leg like that. Let's hope he's okay. Seven carries tonight, 47 yards, a touchdown. And he's going to try to put some pressure on it. Yeah, he's really been the spark to start this game for this offense. Let's hope he's okay. That's encouraging. Rocco Griffin and Patrick Smith, the other running backs on the depth chart, who will get more attention now with Davis on the sideline. They got a couple other ones here. Now it's up to Rocco Griffin. Take the helm. Griffin, a sophomore out of Rincon, Georgia. As Pierce goes in motion. Seals will get it to Pierce, and he should have caught it. And that's going to be incomplete. It was a forward pass, but Pierce, you could see he was ready to take a step up the field before he had possession. Yeah, it's one of those things where you got to make sure you secure the catch first, and, and it's a shame, Clay, because you'll see he has some great blocking at the outside from the wide receivers. He catches this ball, and he's got the speed to beat Magnum Ferrar to the outside with a blocker out in front. And, and, and that's the thing with Vanderbilt, just so little room for error for this Commodore team at this stage. And Chris Pierce had a touchdown catch last week at Colorado State. Touchdown catches in five of his last eight games. A guy that they're going to count on not only tonight, but throughout the entire season. Again, he went in motion. Seals looking his way. It will be Pierce. He's got a first down catch. They go right back to their go-to guy. And he gets it to the 44-yard line, a game of 14. And, and Pierce, what, what a target. Six foot four, 235 pounds. Got about a 12-foot wingspan out there. Just a big target. Now here we go with the fastball offense. And there's Rocco Griffin. 
and, and what Vanderbilt does, which I like, is they don't go fast all the time. They change it up. All these offenses anymore that go fast every play, I think the defense is used to that. But you go fast for a little bit, then you slow it down. That's what keeps the defense on its heels. Throwing deep, it seals. A little wobble on the ball. Coming back for a Devin body. Well covered by Jimmy Wyrick. He got his first career start last week at Nickelback. That was a big time play in the secondary. It was a good job by Wyrick, the freshman, because he didn't get his head turned around with this ball. And oftentimes when that happens, you'll see the defensive back have pass interference, but a good job of still staying steady and breaking that ball up. Wyrick, a true freshman out of Dallas. It's going to bring up third down and seven. Vanderbilt two for three so far on third down tonight. I like to see them get Cam Johnson involved in this offense. He's leading this team in catches. He's the slot at the bottom of the screen. Seal stays clean. And that's going to be a first down catch again for Vanderbilt. And Shepard hauls it in along the sideline. Some pushing and shoving between Shepard and Noah Williams, the free safety. Tell you what, I've been impressed with Seals here. I know it's been a lot of the ground game, but when he's been asked to throw, he's had the accuracy. Here's Griffin again with Raymond Davis on the sideline. It's been Griffin on this series. Reed and Booker combine on the stop. Now, Ken Seals had a strong true freshman season. He completed 65% of his passes for 1,900 yards last year. He did. Quite a showing. Goes to the air again. Again, it's Pierce. And he is whipped out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Caillou Blue Kelly makes the stop. But that's a seven-yard pickup, a first down. And, and Seals just looks comfortable, right? He looks comfortable. He looks relaxed. He looks like he's in command. They got great balance on offense. And the 35, Rocco Griffin. That is a great football name. <laughs> I'm saying that, of like course, that to Rocky Boyman. <laughs> <laughs> Reed and Mangum Ferrar combine on the stop. His parents were thinking ahead when they named him. Now he's probably, maybe he'll turn out to be a good football player, and he is. Here's Seals on second down and nine. Going deep, looking for Pierce, overshot him. Gabe Reed right in the face of Kenny Seals. And forced him to get rid of it quickly as we're down to 10 seconds here in the opening quarter. And it was a great line stunt. You'll see 90 off to left come swoop. They call that a Texas stunt. And he comes right up the gut and gets in the face of the quarterback. Causes the incompletion. Another tough junior out of San Francisco. You talked about his intellect. How about his toughness? He's back that? in there. Yeah, that looked bad. But I, look, you, you called it the, on the opening possession. I, I think the emotion of this team right now is riding on the shoulders of Raymond Davis. Glad to see him back in. 11th play of the series for Vanderbilt. They scored on 14 plays in their opening drive. Could be the last play of the quarter. Low throw. Did Shepard get his hands underneath it? Yes, he did. Caught right at the sticks by Will Shepard, the sophomore out of Louisiana. And that's how the first quarter is going to end. An entertaining one between Vanderbilt and Stanford. Both teams coming off of wins last week, trying to ride that momentum to victory here tonight in Music City. Well, Clark Lee and Vanderbilt thought they had a first down to end the first quarter. Instead, it was ruled incomplete. Look, you can see Will Shepard did not haul it in. So now fourth down and nine from the 34-yard line. And Clark Lee is going to bring out Joseph Bulibus for a 51-yard, make it a 52-yard field goal attempt. And he has a 53-yarder he made in the first game against ETSU. This will be huge to capitalize and get some points here for Vanderbilt. Now we're going to get a timeout. I think or more conversation between the officials and SEC officiating crew tonight. Steve Marlowe is our lead official in the white hat. Joseph Bullivis, reigning SEC player of the week, lost his job to Will Reichard. And Alabama has found a home in Nashville with the Commodores, was the hero last week trying to 
Get a three-pointer here for Vandy to start the second quarter. He's got two makes on the season, and both of them big. And we talked about the 53-yarder, and then, as you just mentioned, the 38-yarder to win that game last week. Wesley Schelling to snap it. Harrison Smith to hold it. Not this time. The rare mountain air last week <laughs> probably aided in that game-winning kick. It is a muggy, humid night, heavy air here heavy in Music air. City that's tonight. Exactly the right and he was short. On that one. Yeah, and that's an opportunity for Stanford to grasp this momentum and take it away from the Commodores. Vanceville College Football Update brought to us by Dr. Pepper. Number eight Cincinnati passing a big road test in Bloomington, Indiana. Desmond Ritter and the Bearcats pull it out. Number one Alabama had a hard about time that. beating the Gators in the swamp, but they get it done by two points. USC rebounding big time. Interim USC head coach Dante Williams got the win. Keaton Slovis got hurt in that game at quarterback. Jackson Dart came in and got the victory. How about that 400 yards and four touchdowns, not bad. Tanner McKee and his pass deflected. That wobbled harmlessly down the center of the field. Nobody home to pick it off for Vanderbilt. It'll be second down. Somebody on that Commodore defensive line got a hand on it. Yeah, it looks like it might have been 94. Rashad Wilkins, Wilkins. Uh, the big defensive tackle out of Chicago. 6'3", 310 pounds. There's Casey Wilkins, his first touch. And they're going to try to use him a variety of ways. And that's the challenge for Tavita Pritchard and David Shaw. Pritchard, the offensive coordinator. Trying to get him involved because he's got some great speed. He really does. A lot of speed on this whole Stanford team. It's almost like last week they used the pass to set up the run. This week seems like they're trying to use the run to set up the pass, but McKee's going to have to put this ball in the air. Third and fairly long. Austin Jones in the backfield. McKee looking to throw. Looks left. Comes back over the middle. Nice catch by Yurasik, the big tight end. Down at the 31-yard line, Anthony Orgy made the tackle. But Urosik, their best pass-catching tight end with Fisk out. Big play for the card. And football is simple. If you got a six-foot-five tight end, throw the ball up high and let him go get it. I mean, what a precision pass. I mean, we, we saw a bunch of these last week against USC and Tanner McKee pick him right back up. But again, you use the height of your wide receivers. They got a bunch of guys over six-foot-four. I love it. Back to E.J. Smith, and he steps out of bounds, a gain of seven after that 32-yard pickup by Urosik. Urosik is 6'5". These wide receivers are huge. <laughs> and we even talked about Bryson Tremaine, who I think is probably their best pass catcher. McKee, yeah, McKee himself is 6'6", six six, and they truly are the, the Stanford treat. <laughs> they got some speed to go along with that height, too. Talking to David Shaw, he said, my wide receivers, they're big but they're also unselfish. They block. They like to play special teams. He just loves that group. Here's McKee going to Tremaine. You mentioned him, and there he is getting involved. Another first down inside the red zone, a 10-yard pickup. Allen George, the corner, made the tackle as we go down to Tiffany. Guys, McKee told me that his receivers, those guys are special. They have the size, great speed, great hands. He said they're everything that a quarterback can wish for at the receiver position. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, you, if they have the height, use that to your advantage. And th those guys can be covered. They reach up in that night sky and catch that ball and bring it down. Tremaine, a former walk-on, now their number one wide receiver. Here's McKee going for Humphreys this time, and a late penalty flag. John Humphreys interfered with it, appears, by George. And it looked like the left hand of George was on the shoulder pads or kind of around the collar of Humphreys. There's a great look at it right here. Pass interference, defense number 28. The foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. 
it wasn't that egregious, but again, if the head doesn't turn around by the defender, the official is more likely to throw that flag. You know, there's a size advantage. We were just talking about it. Humphrey, 6'5", George, a little over six foot. And, and that's the other thing about that. When you got tall, wide receivers, a lot of times you throw those 50-50 balls up, and yep. many times it's a pass interference call. Austin Jones checks in as the running back play fake to him. That's batted down right back in the face of Tanner McKee to Ricky Wright. The sophomore linebacker out of Gadsden, Alabama, with a big play, and it's second down a goal. And it might be a good thing that pass was knocked down, Parker, because there's great coverage on the outside there where McKee was trying to go with the ball. We'll take a look at it. That linebacker came up. He had his vision on the quarterback. That could have been a problem. So Stanford gets a little bit of a break here. Now Isaiah Sanders, the Wildcat quarterback, comes back in. Sixth-year senior, Air Force transfer. He had a fourth-quarter touchdown run last week in the win over USC. On second and goal, Sanders trying to be patient, looking for a block, pushing toward the goal line. He's going to be stood up and torn back by Afumi, the linebacker. And so now third down and goal. And again, we've talked about it, but the front seven of Vanderbilt, that's where the issue is, right? The offensive line, the defensive line, but so far the offensive line has done a good job blocking right there. That was a nice stout play by that defensive front. Sanders in his second year at Stanford stays on the field. Only the second grad transfer in Stanford history. Third down and goal for the Cardinal. Big play right here for Vanderbilt's defense. Can grab a lot of momentum if they bring up a stop here. Direct snap. Sanders, I don't know if he was ready for it. Penalty flag, and Sanders is cut down by Ethan Barr. Boy, that didn't look right for Stanford out of the gate. And it's going to be against the Cardinal. Sanders wasn't ready for it, Rocky. Yeah, he wasn't. And then Austin Jones was offsides. Now here comes Tanner McKee back on the field. One thing about Stanford over the years, especially since David Shaw has been head coach. Illegal motion, offense number 20, moving forward at the snap. That penalty is declined. Yeah. Fourth down. Yeah, they're going to decline it, so it's fourth down. Yeah. And usually Stanford doesn't beat themselves. That's right. I, I saw Clark Lee out on the field. I, think, I thought that's what he might do here, but he decides to say, hey, let's make it fourth down here and see if our defense can come up big once again. Would love to see that Stanford offensive line who has a significant size advantage try to start pushing them around. Ninth play of the drive. Jones, no daylight. Vandy's defense stands tall, and the crowd appreciates it here in Nashville. Alex Williams and Ethan Barr combining on the stop. Vanderbilt will take over as Clark Lee and the Vandy defense come up big. There's Vandy defensive coordinator Jesse Minner in the headset center of your screen. Stanford had a third down and goal to go from the two, had a procedure penalty. Vandy declined it, and on fourth down, they hold. That's like a takeaway. It, it is, and I love the call by, by Lee there. Declined the penalty, sent him the fourth down, two huge stops. First week, had some defensive deficiencies, but that was a big stop to keep Stanford from taking a two-score lead. They're going to try to get some breathing room with Raymond Davis. Again, Davis earlier was shaken up. There is a penalty marker on that play. Offside, defense number 15 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. And I see David Shaw shaking his head a little bit. Stephen Heron, the outside linebacker, with that penalty. Yes. Not a very Stanford-like play there with the penalty and giving Vanderbilt's offense a little bit of a breathing room here. Lucien Pierce 
to the right side of the formation. Amir Abdur Rahman. He's number two to the left side. Davis in the backfield. Davis. Hard fought few yards. Already a touchdown for Davis here tonight. Looks like Davis is back healthy. He had a nice little jump cut there. Didn't get a ton of yardage out of it, but it's great to have him back in the game here and healthy. Well, surprised with how well that offensive line for Vanderbilt is playing here tonight. Remember last year, the O-line for Vandy was oh, a mess. Four mess. players opted out. I, I think it's still a bit of a concern. It was. I mean, you watch the first game against ETSU, and you're like, my God, they're getting beat by this FCS team in the trenches. Not tonight. Davis looking for room on the right side, and he's going to get it close to the 10-yard line, third down. Julian Hernandez is the starting center tonight. Michael Warden, the normal starter, snapping the football out with an injury, so something to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Center, you're talking about you know, the exchange and the snap and making sure the quarterback gets it. So far, Hernandez has done a good job. But a big play here, third down for Seals. I expect something safe here. They've been a, done a good job of being able to get their wide receivers one-on-one -on -one in space here tonight. Joey Lynch, the offensive coordinator, has seen his unit convert three times on third down tonight. Goes to his main man, Pierce. Chris Pierce, Jr. Out to the 23-yard line, first down. Let's go down to Tiffany. When I, when I got to talk to Chris Pierce, he told me that he just tells Ken, just give me an opportunity. I'm going to catch the ball. Just put it in the space, and I can make the play. Oh, look out. Seals oh. heated up and taken down. Steve Heron, who had the penalty earlier on this Vanderbilt series, comes back with a sack. And that's a loss of nine. Yeah. First real big-time play by the Stanford defense. Heron looks like he just comes off the left edge there unblocked. Nothing for Seals to do but just eat that one. But going back to Pierce, and Tiffany was talking about, you know, the confidence that Seals has in Pierce. And Pierce has confidence in himself. He knows he's going to play in the NFL someday. Uh, uh, absolutely. He's got the hands. He's got the wingspan. And, yeah, just throw the ball in the general area, and Pierce will come down with it. Timeout. So Vandy wants a timeout. Joey Lynch, Clark Lee, the Doors want to talk things over with 8.41 to go in the first half. Seven-point game. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Dr. Pepper alongside Rocky Boyman and Clay Mantic. Tiffany Blackman down on the field. Vanderbilt down a touchdown. Their first-year head coach is a Nashville native. 38-year-old Clark Lee had his first win last week at Colorado State. Former Commodores walk-on fullback. He's gritty, he's smart, and he thinks he's the right man for this and job. It just means more when you're an alma mater you know, of Vanderbilt here, and now you get the opportunity of a lifetime to come back and lead this program out of the darkness, and they like what he's building here at Vanderbilt. He looks like a football coach, but when you talk to him, he's very much an intellectual. Very intellectual. But right now, this is a key series here for Vanderbilt. they got to get half this yardage up to set up a third down. Rocco Griffin on second and 19. Almost to midfield. I think they caught Stanford by surprise. A passing situation. They go to Griffin for 34 yards. And what a play call here by Joey Lynch. You're exact, exactly right, partner. Stanford's expecting pass on second 19. They run the ball. And now a new set of downs and great field position for Vanderbilt. From the 48-yard line and now into plus territory. It's Griffin again. I mean, if Stanford stops them right there, it's punted. Stanford offense gets the ball. The defense has not been able to stop them. Things can go out of hand real quick, but that was so critical to pick up that first down right there. Vanderbilt starting to pick up the offensive numbers now as you look at the play caller, Joey Lynch, not the offensive coordinator. That job belongs to David Rye, but Lynch had prior play calling experience at Ball State and Colorado State, so Clark Lee decided 
to go with the experience back in training camp and so far it's working out pretty well. That was an exceptional call there. On second down and seven seals flips it deep and there is Pierce trying to make a play but broken up by Williamson the strong safety to bring up third down. Well that was pretty. That was great coverage right there. Talk about Pierce's ability, the hands, the wingspan, but what could get up there and fight for that ball, Williamson? Good job. Turns the head back. Wasn't denied. That was exceptional. Stanford missing a couple of defensive backs. Ethan Bonner out again this week. Salim Turner Muhammad has been out since the preseason, but they have adjusted well with the guys they've got. Third down. Pierce has been the go to guy. He's at the bottom of the screen. Seals stays clean in the pocket again, throws a strike to the outside, and he has been sharp with his passes on target to Will Shepard. Very close to the first down yardage needed. It's going to be fourth down and maybe a foot. Well, you called it. This is the most confidence I've seen Kenny Seals have in his career. They're going to go for it here. And it'll be Seals trying to push his way ahead. Got a little help from Davis from behind, and I think they got it. Courtesy of the Davis push, I think they, they <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah, there have been some uh, incompletions tonight for Ken Seals. I mean, he's only 50%, but he's making sharp passes, and look at this grit and determination. Yeah, this is it. You know, he's stuffed at the line there, but kind of works his way through, finds a little bit of a hole in the assist by his running back, Davis. Bandy keeps the ball. We'll send Shepard wide to the right. Davis stays in the backfield. Gavin Schoenwald is the tight end tonight. As Davis spins away a beautiful run. Great run, Davis. Down to the 15-yard line. Mangum Farrar finally caught him, but a pretty run and a gain of 26 for the Vanderbilt running back. Stanford's defense is all out of sorts right now, and here comes Vandy back up the line. Keep feeding Davis. Boy, he has been a spark plug tonight. I think he might be better since getting shaken up in the first quarter. Yeah, you're right, but he, he has been tremendous. He's really carrying the load here for Vanderbilt, but you know, Stanford, it's tough on defense. And a lot of times they go with that three down look there. It puts all the pressure on the linebackers. Watch the spin here. Ooh. I love it. It's going right out of the linebacker's tackle. That, I'm not an Xbox guy, but is that the B button or is that the L2, I don't know. <laughs> X, you're asking the wrong know. guy. Me too. <laughs> Play number 12 of the series, Seals sets, throws uh, wide open, man at Shepard. He's trying to put a move on. Gets inside the five, and bulldogged out at the three-yard line by Williamson, and here comes Vanderbilt on the doorstep again. First down and goal to go. Another pretty pass by Ken Seal. That's a long throw. He makes to the outside, picks up Shepard. Another tall guy, six foot three. Vanderbilt knocking on the door again. Vanderbilt not having to wait like they did last week until the second half of this offense to find rhythm. They've really had it through most of the night. And I think they started off early. They gave Ken Seals plays that he likes. He got comfortable early, and that's been the difference. Not this time. They get to Rocco, stack him up. Thomas Booker, the senior captain. Defensive end, big number four out of Ellicott City, Maryland. Yeah, he's, he's the only guy on the conference preseason team there. The senior played a lot of good football here for Stanford over the years. But they really need this D-line and linebacking core to step up here because Vanderbilt's been doing some good things. And still haven't been able to really establish a good pass rush. They have sacked Ken Seals one time. Second down and goal. Here comes some pressure off the edge. Seals stays clean to the end zone. Cut. Devin Body. Vanderbilt. Touchdown. I'll tell you what, Ken Seals has arrived. He looks very mature tonight. That throw was the real deal, partner. He had pressure right in his face, a blitzer coming free from his left side. He hung in there and threw an absolute beauty to body. And 
as the smoke clears after the cannon fires. Bullivis comes on to tack on the extra point. There's the equalizer. Two 14 play drives tonight for Ken Seals in the Vandy offense. That one covers 98 yards and the elusive Raymond Davis, an inspiring part of this Commodore's offense tonight. We're tied at 14 in Nashville. Ken Seals leading a 14 play 98 yard scoring drive in over seven minutes. Both quarterbacks playing well tonight. Both coming off their first career wins last week and looking good. And now Tanner McKee and the Cardinal get the football back. Here's Nathaniel Pete getting to the outside on the kickoff return. And out to the 41 yard line to give the Cardinal great field position. And there is a penalty marker down. This might be block in the back. Offside, kicking team number 27. The five-yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the return. First down. Even better field position yeah. for Stanford. Well, the debut was a big smash on Monday night. Can't wait for week two. Monday night football with Peyton and Eli on the deuce. Eight Eastern, five Pacific. They're going to break down the Lions and Packers from their basement. Special attention, of course, goes to the quarterbacks, Jared Goff and Aaron Rodgers. You won a Super Bowl with Peyton. Did he ever mention a desire to host a show from his basement? No, but I'm convinced that man can do anything. I, I thought that broadcast was exceptional. It was everything you want. It was funny, it was informative, and I tweeted this out. If you're a high school or college quarterback, you better be watching that broadcast because there's so much valuable information that Peyton and Eli were giving out. I can't wait for next week. And it's such a great game to boot. Very entertaining from start to finish. Here's Pete again. Boy, he is nimble. Of course, set the tone last week with that 87-yard rush in the win over USC as we go down to Tiffany. Well, Rocky, you wanted to know who McKee looked up to in the NFL, and I asked him. He told me he likes to study Peyton Manning. He really admires his attention to detail and film study, and you guys were just talking about the great Peyton Manning and what he's up to now, but how about that for McKee? He's got a good guy <laughs> to kind of follow. Uh, that's a pretty good, uh, good advice there to lean on Peyton Manning and watch his preparation. I watched it for two years, and it was unbelievable. Second and three, going deep. There's a marker in the secondary. And around the 35-yard line, actually two penalty flags, one at the 25 as well. This is probably going to go against Vandy's secondary. That's one thing Vandy a problem with last week, nine penalties despite the win. There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Pass interference, number 23. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, face mask, number 13, will be assessed. 15 yards, automatic first down. That's on both cornerbacks. Jalen Mahoney, number 23, he uh, had that pick last week which sparked the comeback yeah, for that Vanderbilt. That was a game changer Mahoney had last week. Stanford and McKee you see changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Vanderbilt trying to get set. First down from the 32. Here comes some pressure up the middle picked up nicely. Throw to the end zone in Urasik and he was well covered. And to Ricky Wright, the linebacker, doing a good job in pass coverage. Second down. I think he played the pass, but I thought it was a good job orchestrating the offense by McKee there. Saw a look he didn't like. Told the formation to break out wide. It's a little bit overthrown. He's going to rush for McKee goes to Bryson Tremaine. It's going to be a short pickup. Third down and fairly long. And if Vanderbilt can force a field goal attempt, that'll be a huge victory for the Commodores here late in the first half. 
Absolutely. I mean, Vanderbilt's defense really playing well tonight. I mean, they looked bad week one, but they've steadily gotten better and so far tonight. Playing well this is a big third down by McKee. This is time for him, just a sophomore himself, time for him to make a big throw. McKee, 9 of 13, 100 yards through the year. And now timeout. Stanford wants to talk about it. With 2.39 to go here in the first half. David Shaw is going to look over his charts. There are 10 Power 5 coaches leading their alma maters. We have two of them in this game here tonight. David Shaw of Stanford, Clark Lee for Vanderbilt. One an offensive coach, on a defensive mind, and neither one spends a lot of money on shampoo. <laughs> well done. Look at this, pretty evenly matched both ways, Stanford and Vanderbilt. That's why we got a tie score. Now there's a big third down here for the Cardinal. We got Bryson Tremaine in the slot toward the bottom of the screen on the hash there. He's usually the go-to guy. From the 28 of Vanderbilt, Jones in the backfield with Tanner McKee, who has looked sharp in his second consecutive start. McKee to the outside, got his receiver. And pushed out of bounds, that is Elijah Higgins. And that's going to be close to a first down. I don't think they got it. It's going to be really close. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down, about a yard short. Gave Judy Lawley the corner. I think you kicked Pushed him out. Take the points. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. I, I think that's a smart call here. Remember, when they were packed in down earlier in the game, Vanderbilt's defense stopped them two times on third and fourth and goal from the two-yard line. So I think it's smart here to take these points. He has yet to make a field goal in his career. 0 for 1, missed from 49 last week. This is from 41. Yeah, I think that might be delay of game. Delay of game, wow. offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. That's bad. He's going to make it a tougher kick for Cardi. David Shaw, I don't know if he's upset with his communication from his coaches or upset with I don't know if he's something on the, the field. Yeah, why the clock wound so early and didn't get his chance, his guys a chance to get out there. So now instead of a 41-yard kick, this is a 46-yard attempt to try and put Stanford back in front. Cardi, a sophomore at Burlington, North Carolina. Strong leg. And that is a strong kick to make it 17 to 14. I, they could have put it back another 10 yards. Yeah. I don't think it would have made a difference. Well, David Shaw told us he's got a strong leg. He's got a range of 67 yards, he told us. Love the detail there, the 67 <laughs> yards. But you, you can see the, the leg. So. With that kick, Stanford goes back in front. And this season, All-State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. We say thank you to All-State. Alongside Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Maffick, Tiffany Blackman down on the field. The Pac-12 hasn't had a team in the college football playoff the last four seasons. We saw Oregon put the nation on notice last week with that upset at Ohio State. Exactly what the conference needed. You know, Stanford was hoping before the year to, you know, factor in. But that first game of the year, they go to Arlington, lose to Kansas State. It was kind of ugly. Yeah, it was. And it wasn't like they were down. They weren't excited. They just didn't execute in that game. And that's what happens. You get a good team like K-State. They jumped up and got them. They bounced back last week. But now Stanford a little bit on their heels. Now this week's Sunday Night Baseball game is the big series finale between the Phillies and the Mets at City Field. Both teams chasing the second wild card spot in the National League. It's on ESPN beginning at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Sunday Night Countdown. Bryce Harper making a strong case for National League MVP. I mean, he's done some great things recently, especially Thursday night. 
Virginia has been red hot at the plate over the last month or so. Yeah, and what a great race. You got the Phillies, you got my Cincinnati Reds, you have the Cardinals and the Padres all kind of locked up there in that race for that final wild card spot. But right here, Clay, we've seen, we've had an exceptional game from Ken Seals tonight, right? This is a chance to take to the next level, try to get some points here with under two minutes before half. Vanderbilt has a couple of timeouts left. They're going to go to Rocco Griffin on the first play of this drive. Thomas Booker quickly closes in to make the stop after a two-yard gain for Vandy. Seals just looks in command of this offense, looks confident out there. And his first win last week. After losing nine games last year, that's on the turf. They're going to say that's incomplete. Wyrick was off to the races. It's incomplete, third down and eight. It was Wyrick who had a nice pass breakup earlier. And I thought he might be able to step in front of this ball, but still able to just knock that thing out there. Because if Body can come up with that, he may get close to that first down yardage here, but now forces a third and eight. Devin Body six catches last week in Fort Collins. They're so happy to have him back as their slot receiver did not play in 2019 or last year. Don't anticipate pressure here from Stanford. Third and eight off the edge, pressure up the middle, and it's intercepted. Picked off, and Pierce has to make the tackle, and guess who? It's Wyrick, who didn't get the fumble recovery, but he does get the interception, a big play for the Cardinal. In a, in a critical error there by Seals, who's played so well, and Jimmy Wyrick. But watch, it was Booker coming on the stunt, up the middle, bang, right into the chops of Ken Seals, and Wyrick does the rest. What a great break on the football, combined with the pressure, just forced that throw to wobble just a little bit, and just that little sliver of time allowed Wyrick to come in and get it. And what a turn of events here for Stanford. First career interception for Jimmy Wyrick, and Seals now with three picks thrown in three games, yeah, less that, than three games. Yeah, and that's one there. You can't force that ball. You're tied up here, getting ready to go in, or excuse me, just down three going into half. And now Stanford with a chance to capitalize. McKee with a couple of timeouts. That's a beautiful adjustment by John Humphreys trying to stay on his feet. And he gets it to the five yard line. The big sophomore wide receiver, 26 yard reception, first down goal to go. And I talked at the beginning of the show, Clay, about ball placement. We talked about the tall wide receivers. Well, it doesn't always have to be up high. It just has to be in the right spot. This is the right spot, low and behind the, def the, the wide receiver because the defender had gotten a little bit further upfield. It's just a great throw that sometimes goes unnoticed by McKee. Stanford one score in the red zone tonight. They've also been stopped in this vicinity once by Vanderbilt. McKee. Going to go to the corner, and Bryson Tremaine hauls it in. Touchdown, Stanford. There's that size by Bryson Tremaine. Just boxed the defender out to make the catch. Perfect analogy, partner. He looked like a power forward blocking up, boxing out the defender. Watch this. Gets a little stutter off the line. Then look, I mean, he's setting up at the post, goes up and gets the rebound, except it's a touchdown. <laughs> that, that was a great job. If you got size, use it. You know, just a, a good job there. Use that big body by Tremaine. That's just excellent football. You know, like Dickie V. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Another extra point for Cardi. Big turn of events. The interception quickly turned into points by Tanner McKee in the Cardinal offense. It really was. And, and you felt the whole game, Vanderbilt has the momentum. But the critical error there by Seals, and look at this, just said this like you're thrown in the backyard, right? Except you get against your older brother who's like five years older and like six inches taller, it just reaches up and it looked too easy there by those two. That's quite a combination, McKee and Tremaine. Tremaine now with a touchdown catch in each game this year. And the coaching staff thinks he's got NFL potential. As Tanner McKee now as his fourth passing touchdown of the year on that quick scoring drive. Two plays, 31 yards, 42 seconds after the interception by Wyrick.
Vanderbilt's not going to have a lot of time to work with 40 seconds and two timeouts as they're going to start in the 25 yard line. Chick fil A college football rankings. Alabama struggled a little bit in the swamp. And other than that, in the top 10, no real surprises. Penn State and Auburn, that's a good one going on right now yeah. on ABC. A whiteout going on there, and you and I watched the Cincinnati-Indiana game. The Bearcats looked bad early in the first half, but then the second half, Desmond Ritter really came on. The defense has been so talked about for the Bearcats, forced some turnovers, and they look good. Virginia Tech yeah, and Miami, Miami both lost today in the top 25. We had Miami last week, and I think it's safe to say they may be a little bit overhyped coming into this season. They struggled with App State last week, lose today to Michigan State convincingly. That pass intended for Will Shepard. Now we'll see what Ken Steeles can do. Yeah, it's, I think if you're Vanderbilt, just be safe here. They're going to get the ball coming out in the third quarter here. Just not have another critical error. Going to halftime here, down 10, in decent position. Raymond Davis, boy, he is an impressive here in the first half for Vanderbilt. Yes, I think Stanford called a timeout, and I like that move there because yeah. they have two of them. You may have a chance to get the ball back with a few seconds. You got a quarterback with a howitzer for an arm and McKee. Maybe you got a chance. Two-score game now here with 27 seconds to go in the half. Tanner McKee, really been impressed with him as we talk about coming into the game. Big recruit, was in the same class as Trevor Lawrence and JT Daniels. Put off college for 18 months to go on a Mormon mission to Brazil before enrolling at Stanford last year. And you can see the maturity in him as He's played yeah. well again here tonight, his second straight start. Give him credit. Not many football players out there, especially as highly ranked as him, would take almost two years off of football to do something great, like go on a mission trip. And But he came back. He hasn't missed a beat. There's Chris Pierce pushed out by Wyrick. And Tristan Sinclair, the inside linebacker, stopping the clock with 20 seconds to go. This is a fourth down coming up here for Vanderbilt. They're going to punt the ball away. and going to give Stanford an opportunity with some time here to maybe put up a couple passes, get the ball downfield. This is the first punt of the game. That's the kind of game we've had here <laughs> tonight. Right. It's really been a ground-based game. Both squads here have really made some hay running the football. Casey Filkins back to return here for the Cardinal, hoping to give Stanford a chance at the end zone or a field goal. Harrison Smith got it off. There are flags down. Filkins on the return, and it's a good one to the 45-50. To the 40 of Vanderbilt. To the 30, still on his feet, and finally caught up with it at the 20-yard line. I don't think it's going to matter. There was some contact with a kicker if it was... It's a 48-yard return, but let's see if it's going to hold up here. Illegal formation, kicking team, not enough players on, on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty from the end of the return, first down. Wow. Wow. Big opportunity here with a handful of seconds on the clock for Stanford to get more points before the break. And, and this is the thing with, with Vanderbilt. You know, just they're not good enough right now to have these self-inflicted mistakes. they just not done well here in the final two minutes of this half. And now Stanford with an opportunity to go up three more points. Joshua Carty already a field goal tonight. This from 35. 
right between the eyes. And it's 27 to 14, Stanford at the half. A game that up until the last couple of minutes of the second quarter felt very close, but all of a sudden now a very comfortable lead for the Cardinals. Yeah, the Vanderbilt's played well except for those final two minutes here. They gotta go inside here at halftime, regroup. They'll get the ball partner coming out for the third quarter. Vanderbilt will have the football to start the third quarter. Stanford with a nice lead at the half. Kevin Connors and Trevor Manage in the studio right after this timeout. Welcome back to Nashville and ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Dr. Pepper. Very entertaining first half here in Music City. Made a tie game 14 apiece with under two minutes left in the first half and then Vanderbilt kind of self-destructed 13 Stanford Cardinal points in the last minute 53. Alongside Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Mathic, Tiffany Blackman down on the field. Glad to have you back with us. You know, I know we're in the home of country music, but <laughs> end of that first half, Vanderbilt singing the blues. It, it really was, and a fantastic first half by Vanderbilt. They had a lot of momentum, a lot of fight, and they're getting ready to go into halftime with this game tied up and just some critical errors with under two minutes. First, the interception by Seals. I mean, a critical, critical error, and then McKee does what McKee does, which is just find his tall wide receivers, get the ball to them, they go up by seven there, and then the punt return with under a minute just gets Stanford back in field position to kick the field goal before that first half ends, and just uh, just some poor decisions made there by Vanderbilt, and uh, they gotta find a way to get the momentum back in this game. Now they're gonna have the football to try and do just that. Interesting to have been a fly on the wall in that locker room, this is what Clark Lee had to say. You know, he knows that it's going to be a struggle at times as this program learns how to win again. He talked to us this week. He said it's more about the process than the results right now, but no coach is going to be happy with the way those final two minutes played out for Vanderbilt. And they'll start at the 25 as we go down to Tiffany. Hey guys, I talked to Vanderbilt coach Clark Lee and he told me with that Seals interception, he said at halftime he told him he's got to just wipe the play clean, he's got to flush it, and that he just needs to draw from all the other plays in the first half because he was playing well. He said he's a young player, he will bounce back defensively. Well, he told me the offense can't keep putting them in some tough positions, but overall he said they haven't played well. We're not having fun out there. He said the biggest thing for them is their attitude up front, guys. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it, Tiff. That's the thing for Seals right now. He's had a really good overall first half, but his thing with his in his history has been sometimes he gets down on himself when he makes mistakes. He's got to get it out of his head. Oh, man, shooting Ooh. through Gabe Reed. You could hear the pads <laughs> pop way up here in the press box. Their best pass rusher gets in to shut down Rocco Griffin in the run game. Good job by Reed, just pouncing off that line of scrimmage. He came right downhill before the seal block could come and get him. And Stanford setting the tone to start this half. We talked about Clark Lee and, and the team not having fun. We saw that week one. Maybe again there toward the end of the first half. Sideline demeanor is such a big thing right now for this team as Will Shepard goes nowhere after that catch. Zara and Manley closing quickly. Well, you said sideline demeanor. That was the big thing in the first game against ETSU. The, the whole sideline's down. There's no leaders stepping up, emotionless out there. And that was the big difference from week one to week two. That sideline, that team needs to stay enthused because they're still in this game here. He's got such a young coaching staff, does Clark Lee. All of his assistants are basically in their 30s, third youngest staff in the Power Five. Sometimes I wonder if they don't have more excitement, more <laughs> vigor than his 20-year-old players. That one is caught, and quickly closing in is Jordan Fox, the sixth-year senior captain from his outside linebacker spot, and it's a three and out for Vandy on the opening series. That was a great statement right there made by Stanford. Vanderbilt's trying to get some momentum, trying to get back in this football game, and bang, 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 three downs. They force the punt, and they're gonna get the ball back with great field position. And Casey Filkins had that great return just before the end of the first half that led to three points. And he is standing back at the Stanford 30-yard line. It's Tanner McKee 
gets ready to go back to work. Good punt by Harrison Smith, the third-year punter for the Commodores. Philkins giving the cards good field position to the 44. Let's go down to Tiffany. When I spoke with Coach David Shaw, he told me he was very pleased with the way Tanner McKee kept his composure. He said he had a couple of misses, but guys, like he told us during the week, that's kind of to be expected when you've got a younger quarterback. But again, he said he has that ability to bounce back, and as we know, he always keeps a smile on his face when doing so, guys. Yeah, we set it up early in the game, Tiff. Unshakable, that's the word David Shaw kept using throughout the week, and we saw it right there. It's good to see that repetitive sort of thing from your quarterback, your young quarterback. Things go up, things go down, you stay calm, you stay level. He's gonna take a shot on the first play of the second half, right down the seam, and incomplete. Bryce Farrell, the sophomore receiver, couldn't bring it in. Deshaun Jerkins, the safety, was back there in coverage. This is a great job by Jerkins, because McKee jumps back and he just uncorks this thing. And the ball's in a great spot low, but just a good closing speed by Jerkins. That's an excellent play. One of your most consistent defenders the last couple of seasons here in Nashville. Makes a nice play. It looks like Vanderbilt maybe trying to bring some pressure here, trying to force Stanford to stay on this side of the field. Second and 10 from the wow. 45 wide open is Tremaine. Wow, oh, that's a gash play to the 31-yard line, the senior receiver out of L.A. The difference of a quarterback is can you fit the ball into a tight window? That's inside the linebacker and outside of the defensive back just puts that ball right on the money to his big target, Tremaine. That's a gain of 24 yards, and this is a pro-style, huddle up, measured pace offense, and now it's about controlling the clock as Stanford is a tough team to come back on when you're down a couple of scores. Yeah, that's the thing, all these colleges, these offenses want to go fast, 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 but you go deliberate, you get up by a few scores, and now you're playing right into your hands here. You just bleed that clock, work the ball, ball control offense. <laughs> And of course, as I say that, as we talk about that, they stop the clock and take a timeout. <laughs>Welcome back to Nashville and the SEC on ESPN. 27-14, Tanner McKee, his second career start, leading the Stanford offense here tonight. There's his offense coordinator, Tavita Pritchard. McKee, the first Pac-12 quarterback to win his first career start on the road since Pritchard beat number two USC in 2007. That happened last week. Pritchard very proud of his young charge last week. He's going to throw deep. Instead, comes across to Simmons, the fullback. What wow, lowers his shoulder. And punishment thrown out at the five-yard line. That's a 26-yard play for Jay Simmons, the senior out of Rel Melrose, Mass. And that is the quintessential West Coast offense play. It's kind of a one-man wrap, but then the fullback leaks out late and lowers the shoulder. Not like a good fullback, right? You don't, you don't see it much in football anymore, but, man, they're valuable. You've got two great fullbacks in Haymui and Simmons. And look at the play se selection tonight. It's been outstanding for Shaw and Pritchard. Yeah, balanced. Keep the defense off balance there. You never know when you're running, when you're passing. They've done a good job. 11.20 to go. Play action. McKee again to the fullback. Pays off Jay Simmons on the drive. With his first touchdown of the year. And everything going right now for Stanford. And that's the happiest man in America right there. The fullback, he has a nice catch. And then look, then the payoff, the touchdown, getting in the end zone. It's just great play action there. You're thinking here comes the run. They're down inside the 10-yard line, and nice pass. When we talked to David Shaw this week, you asked him about the unsung heroes of this team. Right. He said yeah. the fullbacks. Fullbacks, yeah, they're a big part of his offense. You don't see them much in college football, and I think that plays to their advantage. The defense is not used to dealing with them. Now the lead is 20. And Tanner McKee has been on point all game with the great play action, paying off the fullback, and it's all Cardinal here in Nashville.
those fullbacks taking advantage of their TV time. <laughs> That's right. That's very unfullback like. <laughs> That's like the dance you and I do before the game, right? No. Similar? No. Don't give our secrets to it. <laughs> Houston Haymooley, Jay Simmons celebrating that Simmons touchdown. Boy, this game has changed since the late stages wow. of the second quarter when it was 14 apiece. 20 unanswered in the last five minutes and 35 seconds of game time for Stanford. Let's see if Joshua Carney can put another one through the end zone. He's been doing that all night. Indeed he does. Extra yard for teachers, an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation. It brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. That's the Parthenon here Parthenon. in Nashville. That's not Athens, Greece, though. They have another no. one here in Nashville. Pretty good replica, I would yeah, say. Absolutely. All right, how about Ken Seals now? Can he get it back going? He had it going pretty well through the early stages of this game. Rocco Griffin in the backfield. He'll get the hangout. Shets a tackle at the 25-yard line, and he could go. Clock from behind. Near the 40 of Stanford by Zarin Manley, a 36-yard run for Griffin. And the run defense for Stanford has not been great tonight. I mean, they got a guy in the hole, he just breaks the tackle and is off to the races. Davis Griffin having quite a pair in the backfield. We talked about Clark Lee in the run game wanting to get established here tonight against the Stanford defense as Heron makes that tackle on Griffin. I, I think they've done that for the most part. And that offensive line certainly deserves a lot of credit for it. The best game I've seen him play all year. It's an incomplete pass intended for Cam Johnson, who has been eerily quiet tonight in this Vandy offense. Yeah, he's normally the go-to guy. He had nine catches last week. Senior, he's from Tennessee here, went to Brentwood Academy. Nice target there for Seals. Seals now 12 of 23, 89 yards, a touchdown, and that costly pick late in the second quarter. This is where Vanderbilt hasn't been great tonight. Third down opportunity. They need the 29-yard line to keep the drive alive. It's not going to happen, and it's nearly intercepted by Caillou Blue Kelly, who had the pick six last week. You and I were talking at halftime. We haven't talked much about Kelly because they haven't gone his way, and there's a reason for that. He's one of the best cover corners in college football. And he's just exceptional, Clay. You watch him on tape all week. He's exceptional when the ball's in the air. He's got a good way to contort his body and be in position and break on that football. Mentioned his dad, been a long time, 11 year player for the Tampa Bay Bucks, and 17's a real player. Well, they're going to go for it here. They know it's go time. Down 20 points, fourth down at six. Ken Seals over the middle man, wide open, and it's the tight end, Gavin Schoenwald. Ben Brezhnehan out for the second straight week with an injury. So Schoenwald, who doesn't get involved in the passing game much, makes a big play, 29 yards in a first That's a great down. job by Seals there. He's looking off to his left and doesn't look like there's anything anywhere for him to go. The football comes back to his right and catches his tight end, dragging across the field. And the other tight ends on the depth chart besides Brezhnehan had a career catch before tonight. So that's the first for Schoenwald. Going to the end zone, Seals looking for Pierce. And that's incomplete. Covered by Manley again, who's been very active here tonight. And Pierce, we've talked about him. Just give him a shot at the football. It's an exceptional effort, very well covered. Always comes down with a one-handed catch. Reaches that right mitt up in the air. Good coverage. He had a one-handed catch last week oh, in Fort man. Collins that was just outstanding. 
And he had two or three really great grabs. Circus catches. If he doesn't make one of those, maybe they don't win the game. A flag. False start. Offense number 82. Five yard penalty. Second down. They've cut down a little bit on the penalties tonight. I mean, they had nine penalties last week in the win over Colorado State. That's their fifth tonight. Yeah, it's, it's a discipline thing that you can't have again as you're building that roster up and trying to get things going. It's every little thing matters like that. Those hidden yards come up and bite you. So back him up five yards to the 21, second down and 15. Seals will hand it off, and Stanford ready for the run game that time. Stephen Heron, the outside linebacker, he has been really good, as has Mangum, Farrar, Sinclair, that linebacking group. Exception job, look at just closing down, tosses the blocker, and then makes the play. I mean, that is, is just excellent. He shoots down there, just shot out of a cannon, doesn't hesitate. That's, that's what you want out of an outside linebacker. Vanderbilt 166 yards rushing. But Stanford has forced a lot of third down and fairly longs tonight. 30 15 here. Seals trying to get away. Pierce after the catch nearly sheds a tackle. A helmet pops off. And another tackle for Manley. And it's going to be fourth and about 10 as Clark Lee is going to send out the field goal unit. He's going to take some points here. It's a nice, nice drive there by by Bandy. Heard a couple third downs. And I, I thought Ken Seals did a great job. Bandy's two scores coming on long drives. 14 play drive in five minutes. A 14 play drive in just over seven minutes. This field goal attempt from Bulavis he missed from 52 earlier. And that's three for the Alabama transfer, a fifth-year senior, to make it 34 to 17. Well, what can Monday Night Football do for an encore? Week one was amazing. Our week two Monday Night Football game has Jared Goff and the Lions taking on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers at Lambeau. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Packers hit a terrible week one, but so did the rest of the end of <laughs> right. North. You're going to play bad. Let everyone else play bad, too. I mean, you talked about it. I mean, 38-3 to loss there for the Packers. Questions about their energy. Questions about Aaron Rodgers all week. And I, I would, I'm going to bet money they come back with a vengeance here this week. Kind of a pillow fight in that division. <laughs> Vikings losing to Cincinnati week one. All right, my hometown Bengals look good yeah. week one. All right, so Vandy gets another scoring drive, another sustained drive. Again, it's about winning little battles here for Vandy as they try to turn this program around. There have been some positives here tonight. All right, Tanner McKee back out on the field now for the Cardinal, and how would you assess his night? I, I think he's been fantastic. I mean, look at that. It's 15 of 20, 191 yards. Thought he's made great decisions with the football. Hasn't really put the ball into danger. And he looks calm. He looks poised back there. And for just a sophomore, I, I think the, the future is, is very bright for that young man. David Shaw told us this week he wanted to see improvement in his footwork. One of the things he could poke a hole in as yeah. far as his game. Have, have you seen his footwork improve here well, since but, last week? But it's so much more important because he's six foot six, right? He's got to bring those long levers and work those things all the way around. It's just it's so important for a quarterback to have his base underneath him. And I asked David Shaw, how, how do you get better at that? He said, you drill it, you know, 10,000 hours, right? You do it over and over and over. And, and I don't think hard work is, is a question for that young man right there. Let's go down to Tiffany. You guys talk about McKee's maturity and just how composed he's been. Well, you know, he told me right after he graduated from high school, he went on that mission trip to Brazil for about two years, said it prepared him for life going around re meeting random people, and that's given him the ability to be able to gain some respect from these teammates and address them too. Yeah, I mean, he was a highly sought-after recruit coming out of Centennial High School in Corona, California. 
but he made it clear he was going on that Mormon mission as Elijah Higgins is wrapped up at the 25-yard line. Jalen Mahoney leading the charge, but it is a very veteran Tanner McKee, and he is coming into his own here in week three of the college football season. I mean, you mentioned how highly touted he was. He was in 2018 the number five overall passer and the number 76 overall prospect in the country. Kind of disappears for 18 months, but he hasn't really missed a beat. He gained some maturity, and he's really doing a good job leading this offense. Let's see if he can convert this third down. They're two of five here tonight. That pass is high and nearly intercepted. Probably should have been. He was going for Urasa, the tight end. And Brendan Harris, the safety, got a hand on it. And and that that was, a, I think, the first throw I've seen him really force tonight. There, there wasn't anything open there. He tried to make a play, but I, I think that's putting the football in harm's way. There's a lot of black jerseys here around that wide receiver. And he's lucky to didn't pick it. So this is the first appearance tonight for Ryan Sanborn. The junior out of San Diego, the punter. All Pac-12 honorable mention last year. And over and boot. Fair catch called for by Cam Johnson. And Vanderbilt will have it at the 35-yard line when we come back to Music City. 6.53 to go, quarter number three. Seventh straight road game for David Shaw and Stanford going back to last year. It's looking good right now, leading big here in the third quarter. They will go home next week <laughs> finally. finally, but look at the schedule the next three weeks. Ooh, yeah, UCLA is playing great. Oregon, of course, with a big upset over Ohio State, and Arizona State is 2-0. They're getting ready to kick off with BYU as we speak. Last year, Stanford rallied to beat the Bruins in two overtimes. It's always fun when those two schools get together. Oh, that should have been caught by Shepard. So sure-handed, little Shepard. And now you, you see that countenance for Vanderbilt has dropped. We talked about that sideline demeanor and how important that's going to be all year that they stay positive. Yeah, stay positive. This is where the leaders got to step up, whoever they are. This is an opportunity to say, hey, look, we're not going to just revert back to old bandy football where we put our heads down in the mud here. We got to keep this thing going. Best starting field position tonight for Vanderbilt at their 35 yard line. Patrick Smith on second down. The third string running back, the true freshman, will get a few yards there. Like him, he's out of Atlantic City. Didn't get any carries last week, but they think he's got a skill set that they can use this year. Yeah, he talked about how good he's been in pass pro as a young guy, and that's always important if you want to see the field. Under two minutes to go in the first half. This game was tied at 14. Now Vanderbilt down 17. There's contact in the secondary. Vanderbilt fans want a penalty flag. Devin Body, the intended receiver, Jimmy Wyrick, who had that big interception in the second quarter on the coverage. Yeah, Wyrick's been huge tonight. He had a couple pass breakups in the interception. That didn't, didn't look to me like he got there too early. It's a good break on the ball. So another three and out for Vanderbilt. Yeah. I'll bring out Harrison Smith. He punted nine times last week in that game at Colorado State. He hasn't been nearly as active tonight. Casey Filkins has been a weapon in the return game. Backs off here inside the 10. Brings it back up the middle. Stumbles across the 20 and falls down at the 25-yard line. The reminder about Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. We're going to go all access with Jameis Winston. Randy Moss is going to rank the best catches from college football. And all of the early breaking stories right up to kickoff. Former Stanford star Christian McCaffrey and the Carolina Panthers are going to host the Vagabond Saints this week. McCaffrey has kind of become the face of that franchise. And yeah, my wife will be tuning into that game. She thinks he's just the greatest thing in the world. Christian oh, McCaffrey. Yeah. That's right. He's a great player. She thinks, her. she thinks he's hunky? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she likes offensive yeah, guys. You're right. a defensive guy. 
That's a good carry. Nathaniel Pete hasn't uh, taken his return jersey off. So he <laughs> has right. to take that jersey off now because he's really number eight, but when he comes in in the return game, he puts on number 32. They're going to get him over to the sideline. Let's go down to Tiffany, who's got more on Pete. When I talked to Pete, he told me he's a big movie buff. He's a huge <laughs> Marvel guy. I asked him which character would he represent on the field. He said Black Panther just because he's very slick and fast, and I embody that. There you go. That's a good one right there. <laughs> and like a superhero, he's going to make a costume change. No phone booth necessary <laughs> as they go to Casey Filkins, an incomplete pass. And now, like a superhero, he's in proper number eight. There you go. And with a quick change, Clark Kent. Right? Is that Marvel? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I actually think that's DC. Yeah, see? Good. And I know that because of my son, Jack. Quick change. Second down and 10. 190 yards passing for Tanner McKee in his second career start. He's going to go to the air again, and he's complete to Tremaine. And that's a first down catch and run. For Bryson Tremaine. And Bryson Tremaine has been fantastic all year. He had that great box out touchdown toward the end of the first half. And I mean, you play off of him, a big body guy like that, he's just going to make you pay. Very sure handed as well. Here's his line tonight five catches 54 yards averaging over a first down per catch and of course the touchdown and again the coaches think he's got NFL potential and how about that former walk on coming in just works hard every day and now NFL potential sprinting to the outside Austin Jones and flags come in as Jones got whacked near the sideline Clock stops with 4.30 to go here in the third. Yeah, they got a nice one-two combination at running back with Pete and Jones, and Jones is great out of the backfield as well, dangerous in that pass game. Holding offense number 81, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. That's not Tremaine. Austin Jones, he's getting some comparisons when you talk to the people around the Stanford program to a, a great running back that they had in recent years, Bryce Love. Do you see a little bit of that in his game? Yeah, a little bit of that just because of the fact that he can do both. He's a dangerous runner, good slashing kind of running back, but also dangerous out of the backfield. So they back it up, first down at 16. McKee to Tremaine, and the ball is loose. Was that a catch? Was that a catch? No. The officials come in and say that was an incomplete pass as Tremaine never had possession. And, and the call on the field is going to be important in terms of what the replay is going to show. Didn't look like to me that he caught it, but that's the call on the field. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's one of those gray areas. Did he make a football move? To me, it looked a little too bang bang for that to be a catch. And the call on the field, no catch, and no stand, looks yeah, like. And Brendan Harris. Got his hand in there very quickly to knock that away. So now second and 16. The 47 yard line. Run it up the middle with Austin Jones out of Antioch, California. Third down and long coming up. The clock moving here with a little over four minutes to go. Vanderbilt desperately needs to get off the field here if they want to have any chance to crawl back into this game because Stanford is such a possession team and they know how to burn Possession, clock. bleed the clock, you know, it's just, I mean, just the same thing like an army or a navy does. They just control that time of possession and they don't give you extra opportunities to score. Critical third down here though. Pressure off the edge. McKee sails it high. And it'll be fourth down, and Stanford will have to punt, but hold on. Penalty marker down in the secondary. And McKee took a shot, too. Well, he sure did for Brendan Harris. Now, this is likely going to go against Vanderbilt.
that will be a shame, too, because they did a good job bringing the blitz and forced the Aaron to throw. There's no foul for defensive pass interference. The pass is uncatchable. Fourth down. So it would have been pass interference, but the ball sailed on McKee. Yeah, but it was a good job bringing pressure here. It kind of manned up to the outside. And that ball sails high. That was a, it was a bad throw by McKee, but it was forced by the pressure coming off to his right side, forcing him to come to his left, away from his throwing arm, and that's what set the throw off. It's a great that's call. A smile for Clark Lee as the defense gets off the field. So Ryan Sanborn, who was in a rocking chair in the first half, on for the second time here in the third quarter. Cam Johnson standing inside the 10-yard line for Vanderbilt, hoping to spring a nice return. Another marker down. The ball's going to check up. And Vandy is pinned deep, but there is a penalty flag near midfield. That was your contact with the kicker. I don't know. Might have been. Yeah, it came in on the snap, but offsides maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe 81, Bryson Tremaine. Illegal motion, kicking team number 81. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Tremaine went in motion, but he might have been starting upfield instead of staying horizontal as that ball was kicked. Yeah. Remember Coach Shaw talked about this week? Yes, he's a great wide receiver, but he's, he's their special teams ace too, just offsides on that play. So we'll see if Sanborn can put this inside the 10-yard line again. Sometimes this is beneficial to a punter, a little more room to work with. He's going to angle it away from Johnson, and it's going to take a beautiful roll into that corner. Good night. Ryan Sanborn, very grateful for that penalty in his second opportunity. He can thank Bryson Tremaine for That's that That's right. Penalty worked in their favor. You called it, gave him a little extra room. He had a little extra time to get that ball off, allowed his coverage to get down there and down and inside the five. 45 yard punt, no return. WNBA tomorrow, we're gonna have the regular season finale between the Aces and the Mercury. Las Vegas locked in as the two seed. Phoenix could be the three, four, or five for the playoffs. Three Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC. Asia Wilson, who played in the SEC, of course, at South Carolina. She's going to have her hands full against Brittany Griner. What a battle that will be. Now here's Vanderbilt backed up deep again. He's got some work to do. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Rocco Griffin has been a great number two <laughs> option in this Vanderbilt running game. He's continuing to get carries. I mean, if you're Vanderbilt, you come out of this game saying, we have some good running backs, right? We talked about Raymond Davis, the game he's had. Rocco Griffin's run the ball well. He had that long scamper on second 19 that really propelled them in the first quarter, first half. It's closing in on 100 yards. And, and let's face it, if, you, if you're going to compete in the SEC, you got to have a ground game. you got to have some running backs, and I think this has been positive. And back into the teeth of that Stanford front, it's Griffin for third down and short coming up. Vanderbilt is going to be home the next three weeks. They carry a 13-game SEC losing streak into their game with Georgia next week. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a crowd turns out for that one. A short car trip from Athens. Right here in Nashville, Griffin. And he's got it, a first down. All three plays go to Rocco Griffin. Sinclair made the tackle, but Vandy will move the chains. Good job. I talk, just talked about the running backs, but also the offensive line. We mentioned them. I think they've done a great job tonight as that thing develops and 
I mean, they were, I mean, let's face it, they were flat awful in game one. But from game one to here tonight, I think they've really come together and played well. It's very positive moving forward. Taking a look down at the Vanderbilt sideline, I see that number six, Raymond Davis, has got his helmet off. And he's limping a little bit. Looks a little ginger on that sideline. He may be done for the night. Nothing official yet on that, but it certainly appears to be the case. As Griffin falls ahead for a few more yards, and as we look even closer, he, he may have a boot. Well, you remember in that was the first quarter, he was really off to a hot start, and then kind of got dinged up. Came off the field, but then came back in, and it looked like he was playing pretty well, but there he is with the, with the boot on. Now, it looked like it, when he got injured in the game, it was on his left leg, but the boot's on his right, so. Yeah. Who knows? Hope he's comes back healthy though. Second down and six. Caught at the 22 yard line by Will Shepard. What does that say though about Davis? I mean, he gets dinged up. That was early in this ball game, first or second series. He came back and played a large part of that first half. He did. You think his teammates don't notice that? A gritty, tough effort like that? They, they sure do. The, the Temple transfer. He's shown in a, in a team that's desperate for leadership. He's shown some time. It's the little things for Vanderbilt as they try to turn this program around. Stanford leading going to the fourth. Back in Nashville. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Stanford doubling up Vandy as we go to the fourth quarter. There's Clark Lee. Former Commodore walk-on fullback was Notre Dame's defensive coordinator the last three years. Got his first career win last week at Colorado State. Was hoping that Vanderbilt would have a two-game winning streak for the first time since 2018, but they got a lot of work to do in the next 15 minutes. Griffin is going to be swallowed up. Looks like it's close to a first down for the Commodores. And that third and one carry. They're going to get back on the ball and run one here. He did not get it at this point. Oh, what a slippery move there by Ken Seals to move the chains. That was a good job. Sometimes those, on those quarterback sneaks, they try to go just to the right or left of the center. It wasn't there. He just filters off to the left and gets it. That's what Tom Brady was always so good at. Yeah. Those quarterback sneaks. You just find that little crease and it's a little thing, but it's beneficial for a quarterback. Clark Lee trying to build a culture here in Nashville, not unlike the one David Shaw has built at Stanford. Two very strong academic institutions. Football is not the most important thing at the schools. That's right. It can be done. Clark Lee so excited about the potential here with Vanderbilt. Ken Seals, when he decides to run, he's determined to do it. Just how good is he at? Yeah, it's not his strong suit, which is, I, I kind of thought we'd see some of Mike Wright tonight use the running quarterback. And, but, I mean, look, Seals has been great. But Mike Wright is more that runner, gives him that element. Seals doesn't have, but I'll tell you what, partners, Seals has been a warrior tonight. He's made he had made the mistake right before half, but overall, he's had a good night. This is a great building block night for Seals. Mike Wright did not play last week because of a shoulder issue. I thought he was healthy enough to play tonight, but again, we haven't seen him. That pass is incomplete, and here comes third down again. That was an errant throw there by Seals on that one. Now we talked to Clark Lee about the future here, and he alluded to it a, a few times. It's about the process. It's about staying on point. It's about getting better. It's not necessarily about wins and losses. And, and he said, you can't assume anything. This is a damaged program right now that needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. And I know they like Clark Lee at the helm. Pressure coming right up the middle in Seal's face. He had to hurry to get rid of it toward Chris Pierce. Thomas Booker, though, was breathing right down his neck so it's fourth down this is a stanford defense that's maybe not got as much pressure on the quarterback years they would have liked but what a great job they bring booker all the way inside working over the center and the guard he is 
just swats and swims his way right to the quarterback, forces the bad throw. They wanted more pass rush this week. I think we've seen it at times. A little bit more tonight, absolutely. Harrison Smith on to punt. Beauty. Wilkins has to back to the 17. Takes it wide. Bentley flags all over the place. Wilkins is going to be knocked out at the 35-yard line, but there are two markers down at the 23, one at the 25. This is going to go against the Cardinal. During the return, block in the back, 14 receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. We're going to step aside as Stanford gets it back. 13 minutes to go in Nashville. Stanford up 17 is ready to go back to work on offense. As you see the running back comparison here tonight. Jones and Pete the two stars for the Cardinal. And Stanford at 141 on the ground tonight. And they're averaging almost nine yards per carry as they go to Nathaniel Pete. And he's ridden down from behind by Sergers the defensive end. The, the running game was absolutely abysmal, Rocky. Week one against K-State, only 39 yards rushing. Much better last week at USC. And another step in the right direction tonight. Yeah, I, I think so, especially, as you mentioned, that awful opening performance where they couldn't get anything going. But, but I think now's the time where you're really working on that run game. Get those guys some carries. I think we'll see a lot of Pete and Jones here. He hands off again. Here is Pete. As they try to bleed that clock. And that's got to be a comfort to a starting quarterback who doesn't have a lot of starting experience like Tanner McKee. Just his second career start here tonight. When you can rely on a strong run game. Well, that's what it does. You don't feel the panic as a quarterback to have to make a throw or put the ball into harm's way. If you can lean on that run game a little bit, you can say relax a little bit and say, OK, I'll just take my shots when they come and not have to force anything. Key over 200 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns, no picks. He had three total touchdowns last week in the upset of number 14, USC. He's got Jones in the backfield with him on third down and four. Wants to throw for it. He's got a first down reception made by John Humphreys. Flags fly in at the end of the play. This might be coming back. I think it might have been a push off, look to me at first glance. Pass interference, offense number five. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Third down. Humphrey's a big body guy, but sometimes you use that size a little too much. Just a little, uh, it's a little I think a, a decent sell job there by the by the cornerback, uh, Judy Laley. But you know, the, the official sees those hands extended and, and the defender go backwards, the flag is going to get thrown. Eight penalties now against the Cardinal. See if Vanderbilt brings pressure here. Stanford backed up to their own eight yard line. McKee now backpedaling in the end zone, dumps it off short to Nathaniel Pete. And he'll get a chunk of it back, but it'll be fourth down. It was a nice job by the defense there. They chose to only rush four, and they were ready for the screen pass. They sniffed it out and made the tackle to force the punt. Good job. Vanderbilt defense playing a little shorthanded tonight. Derek Green out again. Malik Langham was a game time decision. He has been a no go as far as we can tell. Sanborn back on to punt from the goal line. Cam Johnson need to give Vandy some decent field position to work with. High spiraling kick. 
Johnson's going to bring it back to the middle of the field. Looking for room on the near sideline. Finds a block. Gets it out to midfield. And yes, another flag. As they're starting to become habitual here. It's, it's like one out of every two special teams yeah. plays these days in football. It's, I think it's a conspiracy to give me <laughs> my honest opinion on it. Rid the game of special teams. <laughs> Well, they've kind of tried to do that in a way. <laughs> I'm telling you. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 23. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. That's Jalen Mahoney. So Vanderbilt has it with 10.39 to go. They're down 17. Back in a moment. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve, and in part by the uncorked slushes only at Sonic. ESPN Stanford Steve Conklin. Pretty good tight end back in the day. Look at the neck on that guy. It's great. I good looking he, neck. I think he at one time probably had NFL aspirations, yeah. but it's worked out pretty well for him at ESPN. Absolutely. Life leads you in the right path, and he does a great job. He and Van Pelt. Ken Seals will dump it out into the flat and hit his wide receiver, Cam Johnson. With ten and a half to go. It's second down here for Vandy in their own territory. Down 17. He's Rocky Boyman. Tiffany Blackman down on the field on Clay Matvick. A muggy Saturday night here in Nashville. This game was tied at 14. With about two minutes to go in the first half, since then it's been pretty much Stanford's game. And what was the theme of Clark Lee last week? It was drop the scoreboard, forget about. It. I think they got to do the same thing right here. Let's just concentrate, focus on putting together a good drive. Rocco Griffin, Ooh. with the number one running back Raymond Davis in a boot on the sideline, he gets another carry. Ricky Miezon, that was great, uh, playing inspiring football since coming back off injury, makes the tackle. Third down. As a linebacker, it's all about using your eyes and reading. You see number 45, reads it and hits it. Uh, that's what you do. You, you get judged as a linebacker how many plays you make at or behind the line of scrimmage. That was a great read and an open field tackle. He never stopped his feet. He missed most of the last two seasons with an injury, trying to make up for it now. He's playing aggressive. Yes, he is. Third down and five. 9.25 to go. Seals moving to his right. Another marker comes down. Pursuit. Seals got rid of it. And he tried to get it to Griffin. Incomplete. Penalty flag at the 25-yard line in the backfield. Seals ran into some folks on that sideline. Looks like he's all right. He took a shot as he was trying to throw that ball. Holding. Offense number 74. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Oh, wow. Boy. Takes out someone on the sideline there. It's tangled up in the net. Now that, that was close to being a late hit, but I thought it was okay. Well, you hope that gentleman on the sideline yeah, really. right. And his hat. <laughs> it's a nice hat. So Harrison Smith comes out to punt. See, Philkins is going to call for the fair catch. Steps up at the 32. Stanford poised to go to two and one here late in the fourth quarter in Nashville. Quick commercial timeout. Back in a minute. David Shaw, the four-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. Stanford, the controlling lead here in the fourth quarter. Seven-game road trip that dates back to last season comes to an end next week when they take on UCLA on the farm. Then they host Oregon October 2nd. They haven't beaten the Ducks since 2018. And Arizona State looming October 8th. Yeah, UCLA, Chip Kelly doing a good job for UCLA. I'll try and work the clock here with just over nine minutes to go. Emmett Smith's son, EJ. Sophomore out of Dallas. 
I mean, you got a Hall of Fame dad, and you wear his number. You know, that, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot to, to take live on. up to. Yeah, all, NFL all-time leading rusher. That's it's hard to compete with dad on that one. But, but it wouldn't look right if he was in another number either. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. So, Oregon is the favorite in the Pac-12 North. Of course, they got that win at Ohio State, the clear favorite now to win the league. They were likely the clear favorite before that, but it's a lead pipe cinch now. Everyone looking to the Ducks in the Pac-12. McKee, all kinds of time to throw, looking for Urasik, the tight end. Missed him, so it'll be third down. What do you think Stanford's chances are to be a big-time factor in the North? I think they can compete. They got the quarterback to do it, and I think they do some decent things on defense. I'd, I'd like to see their offensive line just slam the door shut right now, right? Like, just kind of take it to Vanderbilt and ice this game away. That's that's Stanford football, David Shaw football, but they haven't been able to do it here. Now they've got a third and long. Need to get it out to the 42 to keep this drive alive. Take that play clock down inside of five. McKee getting some pressure. Steps out of a tackle, but he's finally sacked. And that is the first sack of the season for the Vanderbilt defense, and it comes from big Michael Owusu. It's a great job. You get a team in third and long, and you know the quarterback's going to try to take every opportunity to put that ball downfield. Yeah, that's a four-man rush. It's a great job, a little line stunt, line game. One guy doesn't get him, but then Owusu comes from behind. Get him on the board, first sack of the season. Davis was the one who made the original contact. He had three passes defended last week at Colorado State. Aluso with the sack. And that is caught out of bounds. Just shy of the 30-yard line. So Caillou Blue Kelly has been an interesting study here in the first few games of the season for Stanford. For more on him, let's go down to two. Well, playing Rocky, Kelly told me that this is his favorite time to be in season. He said, we don't have school right now. That's because <laughs> they're on the quarterly system. So he spends two to three hours a day watching films, studying his opponents and tendencies. He said it allows him to play faster and more confident. Yeah, take advantage of that extra time. Get in the film room. That's, that's what you got to do. And it, it, it's so critical to study the game, study your opponent, and just find a way to get better. Use that opportunity with no class. It's like uh, being a pro right now. Just football's all he's got to worry about. Running out of bounds here is Ken Seals. It's going to be a first down scamper. Stop the clock momentarily with 7.24 to go. And I think when Stanford looks back at this game, they're going to look at and be disappointed at the lack of ability to just ice this game yeah. away and win with the run game. And, and you got to give credit to Vanderbilt's defense. They've come out big. Ken Seals, ooh, that was jumped and nearly picked off again by Jimmy Wyrick, who already has an interception of Seals tonight. I'll tell you what, they got a dynamic duo right now. Cornerback, we just talked about Caillou Blue Kelly. Jimmy Wyrick has been fantastic. A couple pass breakups, had the big interception. And it's just, this is what it's all about, break it on the ball. You either got it or you don't as a corner. And this is very comforting, I'm sure, for defensive coordinator Lance Anderson, developing some depth in that secondary. Again, Ethan Bonner, a starting corner out. Salim Turner Muhammad has been out since the preseason. Another defensive back. Yeah, in Pac-12, they're going to put the ball in the air. Got to have those cover guys. On second and 10, seals down the middle. That's broken up. Intended for Pierce. He's looking around for a flag. Kendall Williamson all over him. Good coverage. And Seals got blasted. Yeah. Took a shot here. Four-man rush. It's Ryan Johnson. Wow. He came from depth. Never broke stride, did Ryan Johnson. 6'4", 280 pounds, fifth-year senior out of Axis, Alabama. Those are the numbers on Ken Seals. His completion percentage was pretty high the first quarter and a half. It's dipped since then. Pursued again. He's just going to throw this one away. It's fourth down. And I think this Vanderbilt offensive line that's done a good job all night is maybe worn down a little bit yep. and starting to 
take a toll right now. Stanford's defense starting to tee off. I, I would agree with that, but fatigue starting to set in for Vandy. And you got to look at the character, though. I, I, I think there are some things that Clark Lee is going to look at and say, we did take another step in the right direction. Last week got down 14 to nothing, showed the character to fight back to end that 11-game losing streak. Tonight, they were in this game late into the first half. Absolutely. It was tight at 14. Yeah, they, they did a great job. I thought in, in the trenches, which they've not done a good job at, but some things to build on here. But 6.52, it's all Cardinal here in Nashville. Stanford by 17, ready to go back to work on offense and work this clock. There's Clark Lee. He knows this is a long rebuilding project here at Vanderbilt. He knows it can be done, though. Yeah. His coach, Bobby Johnson, had some success here. Of course, James Franklin, three straight bowl seasons, won 24 games as Vandy's head coach. And when you and I talked to Clark, he said, you know, this is a great school, a great city, and we play in the best football conference in the country. There's a lot to look forward to and a lot to build around. As Smith gets the run here for a couple of yards. And just going back to Franklin, the, the thing he did was really sell this program, sell it to the recruits, sell it to the rest of the nation. Hey, we're building something special here. And I think that's one thing that Clark Lee wants to emulate. James Franklin all smiles right now as Penn State. And a 28-20 win over Auburn tonight in Happy Valley. So the Nittany Lions are a national title contender. And James Franklin has gone on to some great things after leaving Vanderbilt. Casey Filkins off the pitch. He's got the first down and a little bit more. And now a late hit as it's getting a little chippy down there, Rock. A bit. I think both teams a little frustrated. I like that play call right there, though. Get that ball to perimeter. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, a late hit out of bounds, 80 defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. It's Alex Williams, the defensive end. The, the thing, unlike James Franklin, who used Vanderbilt as a trampoline to get a bigger job, I don't get that impression from Clark Lee when you talk to him that he's got his sights set on something beyond Vanderbilt. No, this seems to be the, the job he's always wanted and, and wants to stay here for a while, really wants to take pride in building this thing. We talked about the fact he played here. It just means more to a coach, I think, when you do play there. And slant route, Elijah Higgins has a first down. Vanderbilt pouring a lot of money into athletics. They're going to have a new practice facility coming up. A $300 million investment, and wow. Clark is excited about that as well. Yeah, and I think that's been a big part of what, what Clark Lee's done is it, the feeling around this campus when you talk to folks is the football program, the athletic program matters now. You know, and they're going to make a significant commitment to making sure that it does. And it, it's so important. You know, you have those facilities, and you know, it allows you to get the recruits in, and that's how you build this thing. Keep it on the ground, obviously, here. And it's Filkins this time, a big scrum in the middle. As we go under five minutes to play. So Vanderbilt likely will be favored in a couple of weeks against UConn, but that SEC schedule is going to be humbling for sure. They've got Georgia which is a national title contender coming in here next week. Yeah, that's and, and I think they've they've done some a lot of good things tonight, which we've talked about. But, you know, Georgia coming in, that's it's going to be a tall task, to say the least. But but, you know, it's not about Georgia. It's not about, you know, even individual games this season. It's like just building and continuing to improve each and every week. Philkins again, big hole up the middle, into the secondary. And 
down at the 22-yard line. Ethan Barr made the stop finally, but that's a gain of 21 for Filkins, the fourth string running back, getting in on the act. I'll tell you what, they got to get Filkins more involved in this run game. He's been electric. We saw him be electric in the return game. He's got a sixth gear that he can drop that thing into as we talk about the balance of Stanford, the plays and the yards. And that, that's, that's David Shaw football. That's what he wants you to do. When we talked to Tavita Pritchard on the phone this week, the offensive coordinator, he said that's our challenge with Pilkins. It, it's how do we get him involved? Right. How can we be creative with him? Because he's such a weapon. We've seen him on special teams use his speed. Well, they got to be careful here yeah. with Tanner McKee now in a game where they've got a comfortable lead late. Sergers made that stop. AT&T 5G best moment. And this all happened in the final two minutes of the first half. Yeah, this game's tied up and it's Vanderbilt's getting ready to drive and, and it just went bad there with the interception. That turned into the touchdown, which turned into a long punt return, which we talked about was 10 plays in about 53 seconds. And that really was the difference in this game because it was really evenly matched until under two minutes to go in that first half. 13 points in the last minute, 53 of the second quarter. E.J. Smith again. Mm. <laughs> Looking like his old man. <laughs> oh, my. Whoa. Oh, he hurdles a tackler. And down at the two-yard line. E.J. Smith. Shades of his Hall of Fame <laughs> father. That was a great job. This play is going all the way to the left. Cuts it back. Boop. Around the defender. Swats another one off. And then the hurdle. Oh, I love it. The old dad's sitting at home, I think, watching that game. Very proud. <laughs> oh, David Shaw said, we've got an embarrassment of riches yes. in our backfield. Yeah, and We have seen it. that for sure. Yeah, and then for a defense, very demoralizing when, you know, the guys run the ball and, and it gets tired and they bring a fresh one. They just keep bringing those fresh running backs in. After that 18 yard run, they're going to feed Smith again. Dives out, and I think they're going to mark him short of the goal. No, we've got a touchdown call. EJ Smith crosses the plane. It's a one yard touchdown run. And he's a little gimpy coming off that pile, but a great job, great effort getting into the end zone. Hope he's okay. And he had the great run to set him up inside the five, and they go right back to him. Cut back here. He goes for the leap. He gets a little assist from his left tackle, Walter Rouse, pushing him into the end zone for the touchdown. Austin Jones, Nathaniel Pete, Casey Filkins, E.J. Smith, the four running backs. For Stanford, we have seen them all tonight, and they have been all spectacular at one time or another. Eight plays, 86 yards, five minutes, eight seconds. And now Cardi for the extra point. 41 to 17. That's not a good sign there. Great couple runs there by Smith. Hope he's okay. Now don't forget week two, Monday night football. Jared Goff and the Lions going to Lambeau to take on Aaron Rodgers in the pack. Eight Eastern, five Pacific time on ESPN. Coverage begins with Monday night countdown, six Eastern, three Pacific, and of course over on ESPN two. Eli and Peyton That's doing their stuff. circus act, which I know you're a huge <laughs> fan of. It's also very funny at times. It's fun, and that, that's the art of the perfect broadcast in 2021. You, can, you can make people laugh, make people learn. You, you get that combination where you do both of those things and, and you have gold. There's so many avenues to get our attention right now, right? You gotta, you gotta have something really intriguing. I, I think that whole broadcast is fascinating. What's the biggest thing you learned from Peyton when you played with him with Colts? The biggest thing I learned was, you know, here's a guy that was just God-given blessed to be amazing at the game of football. He, he could have walked in the building at 830 and walked out right after practice and still been a pro bowler. But what made him one of the best in the history of the game was the extra work he put in. He was in there on Tuesdays, 
He stayed late. He got there early. And, and the example partner was if Peyton Manning, who gift from God was one of the best players out there, if he's doing the extra work, right. what's your excuse if you're not? You know. Well, David Shaw, he demands a lot of work from his players, attention to detail, and you can see the first time scoring 40 or more in consecutive games since 2018. 42 last week against USC. And they have put up 41 here tonight as Mike Wright makes his first appearance for Vanderbilt. The number two quarterback for the Commodores. He is a running threat, as you can see, and he hops to the outside to get the first down and get out of bounds. Former high school track star. And, and I'm really puzzled why we've not seen Mike Wright earlier. I thought that could have been a nice change up. Not, not to take anything away from the job Ken Seals has done, because I thought he had a great game, but just to bring in a, a package or a, a series to get Mike Wright is that change up, because Stanford, if you watch the K-State game, Skyler Thompson, the running quarterback, gave him some fits. I thought Vanderbilt could have used that, but uh, we'll see him here late. Mike Wright, a sophomore out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Showed the sign of passing, but then comes up to run, takes a lick from behind, and gets another first down. Kafusi hits him hard as he crosses the midfield strike. Keep in mind now, uh, Stanford's playing back a little bit, but you can see the speed of Wright. As Patrick Smith gets that carry. So we talked about the Stanford schedule again. The next three games, it's going to be a daunting task. All top 25 opponents, UCLA, Oregon, Arizona State, and then the rest of the way with Notre Dame looming at the end. And Notre Dame at the end. Notre Dame got the victory today, and they'll play Wisconsin next week, and then have a big showdown game against the UC Bearcats. Right pointing downfield, looking for a blocker. Will step out inside the 40-yard line. Under a minute to go. This is going to feel good for David Shaw and the Stanford Cardinal. Finally, the, this long road slog is over. Seven straight games on the road. They're going to have a 2-1 and one record as they fly back to the farm, get ready for UCLA, their first home game since November <laughs> yeah. the 14th of 2020. A home game? How about that? We're going to have to get on a plane and travel and do all that? That's well-deserved for Stanford. They've snap it one more time. They wanted to get another game under Tanner McKee's belt. They have done that with great success. They wanted to find some consistency in the run game. I think that embarrassment of riches in the backfield was effective tonight. And they needed a complete game from the defense. I think they got that, too. I, th I think they did. I, I thought they played well. I, I think Stanford would have liked maybe earlier on in, like, say, the third, fourth quarter, like to really put that game away with some long drives. Weren't able to do that. But uh, here late in the fourth quarter, finally we're, we're able to capitalize. Let's see if this is the final play of the game. Wright wants to throw. It's tipped and intercepted. Picked off in the secondary, Jimmy Wyrick. Now are they going to rule it incomplete? Wyrick thinks he's got his second. And now it's going to be waved off. Incomplete with two seconds left. And I thought it was Caleb Kelly, the inside linebacker, went right through his hands. <laughs> Linebacker's dream, he knows he missed it. Yeah, ball falls to the turf. Kelly's like, no. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> and now this will be the final play. Wright's going to heave it toward the end zone, and he's got a man touchdown. Cam Johnson with his second touchdown catch of the year. And on the last play of the game, Vanderbilt Gets in the end zone. And look, this team's showing it's not going to quit till the till the zeros. Good job by Wright. Gets the pressure, forces out away from his throwing arm, and comes back across. Nice play, Cam Johnson. There will be no point after attempt. 
So that's how it ends. 41 to 23. As David Shaw and the Stanford Cardinal go to two and one. Vanderbilt falls to one and two. It was a well played first half, an entertaining first half. Got a little sideways for Vanderbilt late in the second quarter, and then it was all Stanford in the second half. Yeah, but I thought Vanderbilt showed a lot of fight. I thought they, you know, look, you take their first game till now, I think there have been some steady improvements, areas where they've gotten better. I thought Seals had a nice game tonight, despite that turnover at the end of the first half. So some things to build on, but uh, Stanford, I think, really showed a nice night as well. Let's go down to Tiffany. Coach Shaw, you talked to us this week about finding out if someone can handle being in the fire when things get tough. Well, between last week against USC and now tonight against a good Vandy team, how did Tanner McKee show you he can handle the pressure? You know, I've been saying it for a while. He's got all the tools. He's got all the talent. Um, he just needs the experience. And he doesn't bat an eyelash. He doesn't back down from the challenges. We were not clean in that second half. We can be a lot better uh, in all three phases. Thankfully, defense kept him out of the end zone until the end there. But... Uh, he showed a lot of promise. This is balanced football tonight. How did having guys like Austin Jones and Nathaniel Pete allow you guys to just expand your game? You know, we've been talking about it since since last spring. You just watch us run the ball, and when he, we give our guys opportunities, we got four backs that are really special. And you saw all of them make some plays today. Uh, hopefully, I think EJ is going to be okay, but we'll, we'll continue to watch these guys and, and keep let them make plays. The last home game you guys played was back in November. How much more are you going to enjoy this win, knowing you get to be home this week? Uh, we got to give the guys a map to our home locker room. Uh, it's been a long time, but uh, we're really excited. Uh, we played well tonight, and hopefully we can play better next week. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. David Shaw, he is a pleasure to talk to. <laughs> I enjoyed to. it the whole week. It was outstanding. And, and you look at that seven-game road trip that dates back to last year. They come out of that six and one that's impressive especially when you consider all the COVID protocols all the testing for that the hotels and they get it done here tonight 41 to 23 Tanner McKee his second consecutive win and he's with Tiffany Tanner you helped lead this team to a victory over a good Vandy team tonight but last week then you, you took out USC how comfortable are you feeling in this offense um, I mean, obviously, with more reps, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable making a lot of checks and a lot of calls. Coach Shaw's been doing a great job preparing us throughout the week, what we're expecting seeing, but we always know that the defense can change a lot of things up. And so we have a lot of checks and a lot of calls for everything, and uh, overall, it's just a really well-rounded offense. Balance football tonight, your run game really helped. How much confidence does that give you as a quarterback? For sure, it's huge. Uh, we all know that it starts off with the run, the guys up front. Um, I thought our O-line did a great job today getting good push and having good protection, which ultimately led to us having um, a good passing game as well. And you told me this week that you really focus on the mental aspect of the game. What will you focus on going into this week? Going into this week, just fixing the little things. Um, there was a couple times I missed the protection, ended up getting hit. Um, just, just little things, seeing post-snap rotation, our adjustments, um, so that we could be a more, more fine offense. Thanks, Tanner. Thank Enjoy this so one. What a mature young man, Rocky. And again, he didn't turn it over tonight. No, he didn't. And that's important for a quarterback. I thought he made some fantastic throws. And again, he's just a sophomore. As David Shaw said, he's going to continue to get better. Stanford wins it. They are now 6-1 and one all time against the SEC. Coming up next, high school football from Nashville. Another win for Tanner McKee and the Stanford Cardinal. As they go to 2-1 and one and look forward to getting back into Pac-12 play against UCLA. For Tiffany Blackman and Rocky Boyman and our entire crew, I'm Clay Mantic. We hope you enjoyed it. 41-23 the final. Stanford heads back to the farm a winner. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference. As the 